there I am. I was hiding. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Falls from Iron. Welcome to Hammer Time of our lives. Today we are covering season 1999-2000. Now, apologies for um, that it's not being presented by Duke. He's waylaid with other things. So I've been drafted off the substitutes bench like a modern day Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, modern day David Fairclough to rescue the team. So I am ably accompanied in that endeavour by this young man here, Mr. Andy Miles. How are you, sir? Yeah, not bad, mate. Not bad. Um, is it so bad that I thought I wish it was Saturday tomorrow? I'm so excited now for Saturday. <laughs> I'm just so excited. It's mad, isn't it? It's mad. Oh, no, I'm good, mate. Perfectly, perfectly understandable, mate. Perfectly understandable. I know exactly oh, what you good. mean. Good. Um, How are you, though? For those, yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, anybody that's joining us for the first time, welcome along, either live or at your own leisure. And please make sure that you drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you when any new content is uploaded to the channel, you will be the first to know about it. And there's plenty out that we've got on the channel, guys. You've got lots of... We started th this particular series in season 85, 86, and we're now up to season 99, 2000. So if you haven't seen any of it, please have a look on the playlist. There's plenty of material into. Um, Mark, you are here again. Welcome, welcome. Evening, with our little, um, little historical facts and figures that you come up with which is always much appreciated um, from us here at Falls from Iron. Now, also, we are missing Jazz, sadly. Again, Jazz is sort of like got some things that have just got in the way. He sends his apologies. but So you've just got the two of us tonight. So it might be a little bit shorter and sweeter than the normal. But, you know, we'll make it work one way or another. So Mr. Miles is taking the reins of... Jazz, he's doing the transfers and all the rest of it. So you've got uh, an awful lot to live up to there, Milesy, because uh, Jazz normally does a, a pretty fine job. So um, no yeah, pressure. I've, 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 in total, there was 1,484 transfers in the English football, and I'm doing wow. 900. So I hope you, hopefully you're ready. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought we was going to get out this over short and sweet with just the two of us, but obviously you've got other ideas. No, um, what I've done is I've not done well transfers, so um, apologies. I just wanted to get something in there. So I've just done the Premier League, like the big transfers, which are in and out. So I'll start with our um, neighbours in London, Chelsea. So their record transfers in was Chris Sutton for 13 and a half million from Blackburn. And... These mm -hmm. might not be big, big transfers. So I, I've just done ones what um, who I recognise. And uh, if anyone thinks I've missed any, which were key, yep. uh, do let me know. Uh, the next one was a loan signing of a young goalkeeper called Carlo Gudicini, uh coming oh, on. Oh, I remember Chelsea. him. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, he come in. Um, Chelsea out. Uh, Michael Dubry went to Leeds United for six million. Uh, yep. A young John Terry went out on loan to Nottingham Forest. Mm -hmm. um, what Bradford... happened to him? I wonder. No, neither do I. Neither do I. I still, I still love that story. Um, when he scored in the at, uh, against us at, um, at Stamford Bridge, and he went to celebrate, and his dad and his uncle were in the away fans calling him away. They were giving him stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Bradford City uh, went for a load of experience. They got my best mate, Dean Saunders, on a free, age 35, from Benfica. Yeah. And and they got a 41-year-old Neville what, Southfoot. What year change that is? Going, going from sunny Lisbon to Bradford. Yeah, yeah it's a bit of a bit of a weird one, isn't it, mate? And uh, Neville Why? Southall. Why would yeah, you do Neville that? South, yeah, Neville Southall, the age of 41, signed from Torquay. For Bradford. Why would you do that? <laughs> uh, where are we? Uh, Watford. Uh, I, I like this dude. I thought it was very underrated. Um, signed uh, Heider Hel Helgerson. I remember him. Two striker, minutes. wasn't he? Yeah, I Icelandic, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. 
Yeah. Certainly Scandinavian. Uh, yeah. Um, Leicester. Um, I don't know this dude, but they paid £4 million from him from Norwich. Uh, Darren Eady. They paid. For- oh, yeah. I think he was a winger, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It says left midfielder, mate. Good knowledge. Um, mm-hmm. Also sound, uh, also signed Tim Flowers from Blackburn and Stan Collymore from Villa. Yes. Was this um, Peter Taylor was the manager, was he? Yeah, I think he was, mate. I think he was. Mm-hmm. Um, their record transfer was obviously the, the most important. Probably why they spent quite a bit of money was Emil Heskey went to Liverpool for £14.85 million. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. At the age of 22. Thought he's thought he's been around forever. What, <laughs> what would what would he fetch now? I wonder. Oh, my, I know he, he was so underrated. I know he wasn't prolific, but he was Mike, so underrated. Yeah, Michael Owen always says that he was the the best strike partner that he ever. Yeah, the one the one what slipped to mind for me was the five one England when he played well in that game, wasn't it? Oh, Gates is gone for a sec. Uh, I'll carry on. <laughs> um, another one was uh, Coventry City, gents. Um, uh, they they paid uh, eight million for Wolves for a certain young Irishman, Robbie Keane. Um, so yeah, that 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 was another signing. Uh, Mustafa Hadji, twenty eight year old, uh, signed from Deportivo La Coruña for five million. Yep. Um, they also outs uh, for Coventry was Darren Huckabee to Leeds United for six and a half million. Um, and George Botang went to Villa for five and a half million as well. Mad. Man United. This is a very surprising for me, Gatesy. Uh, only t- the two uh, main players who I've recognised was Mikel Silvestra for five point uh one three million and Quinton Fortune. Remember him? Yeah, he was he, he was a he was a good one. So yeah, we also signed uh him. Uh what else was it? Uh let me have a look. Newcastle, age twenty, eight million pounds for Kieran Dyer. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Uh I don't remember him, Gatesy, but they paid six point three million for him. Uh, Al uh, Alian Goma, Alan Goma, yeah, I think yeah. he was a centre back, wasn't he? Yeah, six point three million. I don't remember him. So, yeah, from PSG. Mm-hmm. Um, the two main outs were Dima Harman to Liverpool for ten million, and Not bad, and Steve Howie uh, to Man City for four point one million. He always was got really unlucky with injuries, Steve Howie. I thought he was a really solid centre back, but he always yeah. seemed to get just an injury at the wrong time. Yeah. Uh Middlesbrough signed a certain left midfield wizard from AC Milan, Christian Ziga. Oh, yes. form. And unfortunately, uh Middlesbrough also signed a thirty one year old uh player uh who I don't want to even say is like a swear word to me. From Liverpool for 1.35 million. Go on, give me a clue. Uh, he, he when he come back as a manager for Blackburn, he, he got a great reception at Upton Park. Oh, <laughs> Judas! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, um, yes. Yeah. Um, these signings, uh, for me, uh, like growing up, Arsenal was the the, the team, and a certain. I don't know if you know him, Gates. He was a 21-year-old French winger from Juventus. 14 and a half million. I don't know oh, if you know not, him. Um, some bloke, Henry? Yeah. Is that the one? Hoover. Hoover. Henry something? Hoover. No, no. Terry? Yeah. Terry T- Henry? Thierry Henry. Yeah, I'm not too sure he, he's going to make it, this kid. <laughs> yeah. A certain Davoy Suker, 31-year-old from Real Madrid. 4.86 million. He went on to be a rip-roaring success in Claret and Blue, I remember. <laughs> yeah. And a certain left-back. Um, they got on a free transfer from Paulista, Silvino. Oh, now he weren't bad. No. Nah. He weren't he, bad. He nah, was he, unlucky. He was sort of like the the sort of like the bridge between, 
Nigel Winterburn and Ashley Cole. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, this still amazes me, this transfer. A certain 20-year-old Nicholas Anelka left for Real Madrid for £31.5 million. Pound. That is crackers, isn't it? Imagine what he would be worth now. Oh, mate. And he played for some big clubs and fetched some big money in his time. I mean, what? Arsenal? Um, did he play? I'm sure he played for Paris Saint-Germain at one point. Paris Saint-Germain, Juventus. Real Madrid. Yep. Um, Liverpool. Bolton. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Move on. Yeah, Chelsea. <laughs> um, who yeah, else? Chelsea, did he yeah. Play? West Brom. Did he played in the Champions League final in, in 08 when um, yeah. when John Terry had the five banana boots during the penalty shootout. Yeah, yeah that was the one. Um, my favourite player. No, he's not really. A 21 year old Portuguese uh, went to the South Coast, Southampton, Lewis Boa Malte for 630,000. Mm, fair enough. Uh, nice. Villa, all, Villa um, I mentioned Botain earlier, but they also paid 2.16 million for England goalkeeper David James. Okay. Uh, Leeds bought in Danny Mills from Charlton for 5.4 million. Mm -hmm. uh, they sold uh, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank for 15 million. Oh, no. He, he I liked as a striker. He was a yeah. cracking player. Pace, power, aggression. Both footed. Yeah, could good in the air as well. You know, I mean, he he was an absolute monster of a centre forward. Really, yeah. I'd have loved to have seen him at West Ham. Yeah, no, definitely. I think when he went to Chelsea, him and Johnson was just ridiculous, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and they um, also had uh, Zola pulling the strings just behind. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, our neighbor neighbors in North London, uh, Tottenham. But uh, these players who, who I know, so that's the reason why I picked them, was mm -hmm. Anthony Gardner, 1.35 million from Port Vale at age 19, went to Tottenham. Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. They also signed G Gary Doherty from Luton for 1.35 million. Yeah. And two wingers from Peterborough, one Simon Davis for 945,000 and a certain... Oh, yes. A certain hammer of the year, Matty Everington for six hundred and seventy-five thousand. Yeah, I remember him. He was he yeah. was brilliant, Matty. Yeah, I can't wait for I can't wait for them seasons <laughs> to, to mention him. <laughs> Only in a couple um, of weeks. Yeah, um, Liverpool. Um, I mentioned Heskin stuff earlier, but these are the ones from abroad. Uh, Vladimir Svitsov for six million. Um. Yeah. I always he played get the Champions so, League final against Milan, didn't he? I'm sure he did. Yeah, he scored as well, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I always get his name. Westerveld. Is that it? The goalkeeper? Sund Sund Sunder Westerveld, yeah. Yeah, that's it. 5.4 million. Um, they also signed Stefan Honschel for 4.86 million from Blackburn. And Sammy Hippia for three yeah. three and a half million. And goal, goal scorer sensation... West Ham legend TT Kamara, three point five million. Oh, oh, god! <laughs> oh my! Oh, you you said about swearing. Well, I think you just done it there. Good God! Honestly, um, and the last he club before the Mar tacky. yeah, yeah, and the last uh, the last the Merseyside um, these transfers they signed a certain Kevin Campbell from Turkey. I always get this name wrong. Triple oh the, the Turkish Tra Trabzon Spore? Yeah, that's the one. Four million, yeah. I can't pronounce it. And um <laughs> like Brazil with sort of Greek names, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. so oh it's struggle with Greek names. To travel to tra 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 That's when Nicholas and Elka played for them as well. Did he? Yeah. And okay. a certain Abil Xavier. The right. Oh, back he from was Pitch the one. Free. He had the sort of like the bleached blonde hair, the sort of like the big barnet and the beard. The go -to Yeah, they moved to Liverpool, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I bet that went down a treat. A yeah. like Rafa Benitez. <laughs> yeah. And a certain out, I, I, I thought he was very underrated. Um, defensive midfield player went to Lent, Olivier Decault for 5.5 .5 million. Oh, yes. Yes. He was, uh, he, he liked to get a card or two. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. And now we're again, ready. He's probably one of them. He's probably one of them players that, You'd probably hate in an opposition team. I remember yeah. him at Leeds and at Everton. But yeah, you put probably if, if we'd have had him in a claret and blue shirt, we'd have taken him to our hearts. I'm quite sure. 
a bit like we did with uh, Bellamy. Yeah, no, definitely. Telephone. It's all right. Got rid of that. <laughs> uh, so West Ham United. I thought I'd put of... that on silent. <laughs> uh, we signed a certain 22-year-old Marley forward on loan from Olympic Lyon, Freddie Canute. Yeah, whatever. Where did he go? Well, oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, we won't talk. We about signed that. a 37-year-old left back, uh, Stuart Pearce. Yes, did very well for us. We I signed him breaking his leg and wanting to come back on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. We saw. I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this. Gary Childs from Benfica. Oh, now he was related to. Um, is it um, the Charles? Um, the Charleses that played for us in the sixties was it? Uh, oh, Clive yeah. Charles and I'm sure he oh, was like no. their nephew or something. Mark yep. will probably jump in in a minute and he'll 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 come in and say, yeah. "Yeah, I'm I'm fairly sure he was he was related to them. He was like their their nephew or something." Yeah, uh, we were very busy in the strikers market. We also signed a certain Paolo Wanchop from Derby County, four point eight two million. Mm. Yeah, yes. he went bad. Very, he, he was bad. he was very underrated. I thought. Yeah, yeah, very underrated. We signed a 16-year-old Jermaine Defoe from Charlton Athletic, 1.5 million. Oh, yes. He's still playing, isn't he? Isn't he still up in... Um... Rangers, yeah, he won his first, yeah. first trophy, didn't he, this season? Ah. Oh, oh, right. Mark, you've let me down, mate. I thought you'd know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to right. Google it. Right, so Gatesy, if we mentioned yes, it last week, if it isn't, we signed a certain Rob Jones on a free transfer from Liverpool. Oh, that went well. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you know, I remember him in the sort of like the, right about 92, 93, something like that. He rocked up at yeah. Liverpool. I think he grew beforehand. And I thought he looked a cracking player at right back. I thought he could go on to be England's right yeah. back for another five, ten years. But... Again, he was just someone that got real unlucky with injuries, and he he rocked up at, at West Ham. I seem to remember we, I think we had a cup in in for a couple of games pre season and whatever. I'm I'm not yeah. too sure if he made an appearance in the Inter Toto Cup at any point. I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember that well, but um, yeah, he, he he turned up and quickly retired. Yeah, and it only happened to West Ham, couldn't it? Yeah, no, definitely. And certain outs, uh, just the ones with what spring to mind. Uh, the Israeli wizard went to Celtic for 7.29, 7.92 million. Unfortunate. And yeah, I was I was sad to see him go, but the thing was, it was it was to sort of like to make space for Joe Cole, essentially. Yep. Um, Stan Lazaridis went to Birmingham for two million. Ah, oh, Skippy. Yeah. Um, Lee Hodges went to Scumful for 131,000. <laughs> and just uh, a couple, yeah, just, move just on because, just because I just because I, I miss saying his name. So Massey Abu went on loan to Walsall, <laughs> and Didn't he a, later play for Ipswich, yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and Stephen Bywater went out on loan to Wickham Wanderers. Yes, yes, he had a fantastic debut in this season. We've got to talk yeah. about that later. But yeah, no, um, I've got more to come with regards to stats like player awards, where we finished, top goal scorers, and all that. But I will save that for the end after we re review some amazing games what we've picked. So yeah, do you want to go first yes. this week? Because I've talked for a bit, or do you want me to go first again? I don't know. No, 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 no. You, you, you can go first. You can go first. Right, age before beauty. Okay. Thanks. I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Little trip down memory lane. Where are you taking us, Milesy? You've got uh, don't forget you've you've got not just Premier League games, you've got Inter Toto Cup games, you've got UEFA Cup games, you've got FA Cup games, you've got League Cup games. Where are you taking us on this magical mystery tour? Uh, I am picking three of the games from Harry Redknapp's season of six of the best. So this was the video Ooh. what Harry Redknapp brought out. And a certain one is the 2-1 victory against Arsenal on the 3rd of October, 1999, Ooh, which was... Oh, I remember which, that. 
And this was on my eighth birthday. Oh, you, you graduated from Rusks at this point and moved on to yeah. something a little bit more adult like Weetabix. Yeah, I, 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 I finally knew what McDonald's was. Oh, God, that explains a lot. <laughs> yeah. Happy meals. <laughs> happy meals. <laughs> Not so happy meals now. But yeah, just look, at no, those, definitely. look at those teams, Molesy. Take, take, us, take us through the teams, mate, if you will. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. So we've got uh, Shaka Hislop in goal. We've got Steve Potts as right back. Uh, Igor Stimach, uh, partnering uh, Razor. Uh, we've got uh, God Rest His Soul, Mark Vivian Foe, Frank Lampard, Steve Lomas, John Monker, Trevor Sinclair, and the great duo up top of Paolo Di Canio and Paolo Wanchop. Oh, this team is just ridiculous, but I'll go for it. Uh, for Arsenal, in goal, David Seaman, Tony Adams, uh, Martin Keown, Oleg Lujne. That's how you say it, isn't it? Or is it yeah. yeah pretty uh, Giles Grimonde, uh, yeah. Silvino, Freddie Lundberg, Patrick Vieira, Dennis Bergkamp, Thierry Omri, and Davoy Suker. <sighs> what a team. What Not a bad, team is that it? is. Not bad. Yeah, but Not we, we, taught, we, we teach them a lesson in this game. game. Yeah, well, I'll tell so you what. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be honest, Malsey. I was I was at this game, and we got yeah. murdered. We got absolutely murdered. But the one yeah. and only reason why we didn't lose was because Paolo Di Canio had an absolute blinder, absolute blinder. Yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll mention the report after, so you don't need to show the cards. <laughs> they come they come quite popular in this game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Right, so uh, the first goal, gents, uh, comes with Paolo Wanchop takes the ball down on halfway, lays it off to Di Canio, and if you have if all the young listeners, uh, literally go and watch this game because, like what Gatesy said, um, if it wasn't for Di Canio, we wouldn't win it, and this just shows why. Picks the ball up on halfway and literally just starts taking on the team, literally going past everyone, gets to the edge of the box, and Vieira, to be fair to him, done a good tackle, and they probably thought. Uh, their their job is done. And then um, the ball for them fell to Lampard. He'd done a great flick to Sinclair, who started driving on the right-hand side of the penalty box. Seaman comes out to block the angle, completely misses it. Sinclair plays the ball in. Uh, I can't remember who the defender was who tried to clear it. The commentator didn't really say. But then they 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 went for a diving header. The ball fell to Di Canio, open there on the volley. And his usual Di Canio, I'm not doing it because of my beer belly. Head over, <laughs> shirt over his head and started running into the into the old um, main stand and one nil West Ham. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty much it for the first half. I think Gatesy probably sums it up as well. It was probably under the cosh, so that was probably the only chance um, what we had. Right, <laughs> Gatesy knows what's we coming. Got, I think our, that... we got absolute. Honestly, it was. It, it, at times, it was quite painful to watch. I remember, I mean, we, we were sort of like defending for our lives. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, how, how we won this game, it was, um, put, put it this way, at least at least when Dick Tur- Turpin ro- went out robbing, at least he had the good grace to wear a mask. But none of our <laughs> lot wore a mask that day. But we were, we were robbing Arsenal blind. Yeah, and... Uh, Gatesy, so I'll write notes just to remember what these notes are uh, for each of the goals. But on this, on the next one, I've just wrote Di Canio Weldy. So, mm. anyone hasn't? So, Shaka Hislop has the ball. Long ball up. Uh, one chop versus Adams. Adams actually wins, wins the header, but the ball then fails to Di Canio, takes it down, flicks it over Martin Keown's head, and then Seaman comes out to make the goal. But then on the half volley, smashes the ball uh, into the top corner and runs straight into the crowd. Gacy, did, did you say, is it this goal where you're in this picture of the goal? Because it was in the uh... Bobby Moore lottery. Was it you who said it or was it someone else who I know? I just remember when we were talking on another stream. and I think this game got mentioned when we was doing something no. else. I think you might. Because it is in the Bobby Moore lower. I was... No, I I don't know that I was in the shot of the oh. of the celebration. If I am, I've never seen it. 
Oh, I thought. Oh, because there's someone else who I know down my local, and they're in the picture, maybe. Um, okay. But yeah, have a look. If you look at the celebration on it, and then there's like a couple of photos with the Canio jumping in the crowd. If you were in the lower, you're probably in the picture. So yeah, we might have to look oh, forward I, to I that. Was, I was in. I was in the lower, Bobby Moore lower. Um, and if if sort of like if you can imagine where I was sitting in the stand, the goal yeah. was in front of me, obviously. Um, the goal that was in front of me was to my left. I was yeah. sort of like yeah. quite so close to you're, the, you're probably, um, the east stand. You're definitely in this photo. You've got to be. And why I'm doing oh, okay. that, Google it. Google it. I want to, <laughs> and see if you can get the picture. Oh, I'll have a look at the picture after. Um, then squeaky bum time. Um, with this one, gents, Arsenal get a go back from uh, Davos Suka. Lundberg played the ball to Overmars. He was on the right for, for a change. With his left foot, though, played a wonderful ball in. Uh, Rio Ferdinand, all we could do, bless him, was a diving header, but unfortunately fell to Davo Suke, um on the volley, 2-1. Uh, and probably like a typical West Ham fan, you're probably going to think the next goal is going to be uh, <laughs> an, Ars- an Arsenal goal. But yeah, um, but no, we, we held on. But there was some uh, bit of a proper London derby, which you probably wouldn't get away with nowadays. First springs to mind was Patrick Vieira getting sent off for a second yellow on a naughty tackle on Mark Vivian Foe. And then he uh, raised an arm to raise a rudder, and it all kicked off. Do you remember that, Gatesy? Oh, I do indeed. Yeah, N- naughty, naughty Vieira. Around Vieira. the centre circle, as I remember. Yeah, uh, um, and Vieira gave um, gave Ruddock a parting gift. Lovely man. Yep, yeah. yeah. Fraser, he just cracks me up though. The he, like hit him, and Razor was just like, "Whoa!" And I was like, "You're doing that to Razor? You must be brave." <laughs> brave or stupid? Yeah. And the last bit of the game before I move on was Mark Vivian Foe got sent off in the last minute for us for a naughty yeah. challenge from behind as well. And he, the funny yeah. thing was he blew, he blew and he knew, and he just went like that. And as he was walking yeah. off, he got standing ovation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I remember this game, like I say, really, really well. And how we come away with three points is absolutely astonishing. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, what happened there mind you it's nice to be that side of that particular coin normally we're looking at matches where we've dominated and we've lost one nil so it's quite nice to actually be on the other side of it for a change and go yeah. but i think i think but, it was to do with that the, the the defense though mate that was a strong defense you're not really getting past that yeah. either and yeah. and this season in particular this is probably one of shaka's best seasons i think so he, he yeah. he's definitely good so yeah that was my first game. London Derby here, win so against you. Got, so we got five yellow cards <laughs> yeah. and the red. And they got one, two, three, four, five, six yellow cards and then a red. So, yeah, that's... Um, well, actually, Proper yeah, London Derby. Mark Vivian, so Mark Vivian Foes was a second yellow. So obviously that's upgraded to a red. Um, and the same with Patrick Vieira, actually. It says here that it was a second yeah. yellow card upgrade yeah. to a red um, for his sending off. There's more cards than Clinton's, for goodness sake. <laughs> but no, it's ridiculous. Uh, well, what, what's more better against than a, than a win against uh, the, North, the North London, especially the team back then? So, yeah, that was the main reason. And, and being an eight-year-old, you slowly start to remember games. So, um, hmm. and obviously watching that video, uh, Harry Redknapp six are the best when I was younger as well. So that's, that's the reason why this game uh, springs to mind. So yeah, London Derby win. Nice. Nice. Well, well done. I, I think that was a, a very good choice. As I say, it's a game I remember very, very vividly. Um, well done. Good choice. Thank you, man. Yeah, brought back some nice memories for me, that one. And I'm, I'm going to have to look now because you've got me curious. It may well be that I'm actually in a, a bit of footage that I'll, try and find the fo- I'll try and find this photo. Fo- I'll try and find this photo and I'll send it. You send might not recognize me. I was a lot more handsome than I am now. You know, I had more hair. What, was less, Mrs. Gates less, less... there as well? Uh, she, I was with Mrs. Gates at the time, but not with her at the match. Okay. She was in my life at that point. <laughs> she, she'd entered my, my life a couple of years earlier. So, there Fair you enough. Go. Okay, so my choice. Well, 
for my little sojourn into um, memory lane, I'm going to take a little trip back to the 24th of August, 1999. Ooh. We took a trip across the English Channel and we went to a club called Mets. Now, this was in the Intertoto Cup final and the Intertoto Cup final was played over two legs. We mm. played the first leg at Upton Park and we'd lost 1-0. Uh, and from memory... Um, I'm fairly sure that it was a young Frenchman that may be familiar to you. Um, his name was um, Louis Saha. You ever heard of him? Yes. Um, he always scored against yeah. us, didn't he? No matter what bloody club he played for. Yeah. Yeah. Fulham, Manchester United, Everton. Didn't matter who he sort of like had the, the kit on. He even scored against us in an Intertoto Cup final first leg before anybody had ever heard of him. Um, it was a header, if I remember correctly. Um, Mark's just jumped up and he said he's, it's his, it was his, fir his only first and last, as things stand at the minute. Hopefully it won't be your last. Hopefully you get another one in, Mark. Um, but so far, it's his only European trip. So let me just get the, um, the match card up and just go full screen with that and zoom in. So... Uh, the Mets team, there you go, uh, was goalkeeper Lionel Letizy, um, whose name I remember from probably, I, I'm fairly sure he played for France at one point or another. Um, but the rest of the games, the rest of the players in general, most of them I don't really know. Um, a couple I, that's what I do, um, but not too many. Philippe Gallio. No idea. Sylvain <laughs> Kastendeutsch. No idea. Sylvain Marshall. No idea. Pascal Pierre. I mean, that couldn't be more of a French name if he tried, <laughs> could it? No idea. Jeffrey Toys. No idea. Next name. Next name is very familiar to me because he later played for West Ham. Sebastian Schemmel. Remember him? Uh, did you, have you seen his ham, my, uh, Hammers 11? I haven't, of, but I, mate, I know got, that he's got a restaurant in Luxembourg, hasn't he? Oh, Called Upton mate. Park or something. And and he's got a West Ham tattoo on his arm as well. Brilliant. Brilliant. You've got to I watch think it. He's only with us for about two, three seasons. Yeah, you've got to watch but, it. You've got to watch it, mate. Trust me. It's, yeah. it's a great watch. I will do. The next name rings a bell, but I can't think where I've heard this name before. Danny Boffan, a Belgian yeah. player. He um, must have put uh, trying to think where I've where I've heard him before, but it'll come to me probably a lot, lot later on. I'm looking at Frederick Mayru, no idea. Nicolas Goose, no idea, and Louis Saha. Now, yes, him I do remember. Um, and then you look at the West Ham team that rocked up. Um Shaka Hislop in goal, yep. Steve Pott, club legend, Rio Ferdinand, Mark Vivian Foe. Mark Keller, Frank Lampard, Steve Lomas, John Monker, Trevor Sinclair, Paolo Di Canio, and Paolo Juan Choppio. Um, yeah, because I remember out a little bit. Yeah, because I remember this, Gatesy, because like I said, this one was on um, Red Nap Six of the Best, and he and he said yep. our injuries was ridiculous, and he was just amazed as well. Look, I think it was Lomas uh, played at the well, back only three got two with defenders Pertner. there. Really? Yeah, yeah only got two Lomas. Defenders. Yeah, Lomas played as a centre back that day with Rio and Pozzi. Yeah. Mad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You sort of look there and it's like Rio and, and Ferdinand, you're sitting there thinking, everybody else is a midfielder and a striker. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, managed to do it. Um, backs against the wall and, and they won when they had to. Uh, and on the substitute's bench, coming on for Paolo Di Canio in the 80th minute was Joe Cole. Um, again, looking at the subs for Mets. Um, Ludovic Aswar, no idea. Nenad Yestrovic, no idea. And Jonathan Jaeger, no idea. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's, it's not like we were playing Marseille or one of the other big French teams. But, you know, we were 1-0 down. And we turned, like I say, we, we overturned the deficit and won the, um, won the Intertoto Cup, which obviously is a much maligned trophy. But at the end and of the day, I, if from memory, 
Um, the two other, because there was three Intertoto Cup finals yeah. that year. And the other two teams from memory, I think you can probably check it out just, just to make sure I'm not spouting a load of nonsense, but I'm fairly sure that the other two teams to win it were Montpellier and Juventus. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Jazz mentioned it last week, I think, as well. I, yeah. think, you're, so, I think you're correct. Not being funny, you know, they're not exactly, you know, it's not like it's raggedy ass rovers from Bucharest or somewhere like that. You know, it's like, you know, Juventus, name name me a trophy in Europe that they've not won. You can't. They've yeah. won them all, including this one. And I'm fairly sure was did they have Zidane in their ranks at the time? I've got yeah. a funny feeling they might have done. And Gatesy. And someone's actually got it as well. You can watch the whole game on YouTube because I remember watching this back uh, actually during lockdown last year. And I've, and this yeah. was live on Sky, this game. Live on Sky, this game was. It was. It was indeed. And Mark's just jumped in there and said, we had a reserve keeper called Boffan. Yes, we did. Rude Boffan. That would have been, um, I think, in the first days of, it's either the first days of Allardyce or um, in Avram Grant's reign. Yeah. I can't remember. I've got a funny feeling it was Allardyce. Um, but yeah, yeah, rude boffan that was. I do yeah. remember him. Yeah, and so. and um, you're probably going to mention it. I think we took six thousand. Was it six thousand to Mets, or was it more than that? Um, I, to be honest with you, I've got no idea. But I know from photographs, it was a good few. And it was the whole at the attendance. It it was nineteen thousand five hundred and ninety nine. Um, so if we took what six thousand, you say. Yeah, I think so. Um, if if we took six thousand, that's a bloody good effort. Bloody good yeah. effort. So, yeah. okay. So, um, I'm, now. Loving, I'm looking forward to this one. <laughs> so, the Aldi Martin Tyler makes makes an appearance here, ladies and gentlemen, for on the twenty fourth of August, nineteen ninety nine. Our Inter, UEFA Intertoto Cup final second leg where we're 1-0 down and we rock up at Mets and overturn it to win 3-1 on the night, 3-2 on aggregate. Enjoy. So here comes Mark Keller making a move forwards for West Ham. Receives it back from Wanchup, back to Keller. Plays the ball through for Di Canio. Tease it up for Trevor Sinclair. 1-0 West Ham. Beautiful left foot strike from Trevor Sinclair from outside the box. Low into the bottom corner to Letizy's left-hand side. And that makes it 1-0 on the night. One all on aggregate. And West Ham are off and running here in France. Forward by his lot. Into midfield, Lampard plays the ball forward. There's Di Canio. Plays the ball in for Frank Lampard! 2-0! Frank Lampard getting on the end of the cross from Paolo Di Canio on the right-hand side of West Ham. Meets it with a side foot volley. Let is he no chance. That makes it 2-0 on the night. 2-1 on aggregate to West Ham. Fantastic goal. And here come Mets. But challenge is made. But here come Mets again. Down to West Ham right. And it's a goal for Mets. Nenad Jestrovic scores for Mets to make it 2-1 on the night. 2-2 on aggregate. West Ham still have the advantage of the away goals. Mets need another goal. A beautiful left foot strike for Jestrovic. Here comes Moncur. Plays it out to Di Canio. Chipped ball back to Monker. Through ball for one chop. He's round the goalkeeper. One chop makes it 3 1 to West Ham United on the night. 3 2 on aggregate. And they are within touching distance of the UEFA Cup. 
The ball was played through by Monker. One shot got there ahead of Letizy. Went round the goalkeeper who was completely stranded to make it 3-1 on the night. 3-2 to West Ham on aggregate. Love it. The memories. Oh, UTO, I yeah. And I, I was at the first leg where we lost 1-0 and yeah. I came away thinking, oh, well, that's it. We've blown it, you know. And I I just thought, yeah, typical West Ham and didn't ever see that we were going to come, come away with a 3-1 win from an away trip in France. So, you know, and uh, Mark just jumped in and said um, the trip had everything you'd want from an only European trip, including crowd disturbances, mainly due to overeager policing. The French John Darmory, a little bit overeager, Mr. Brown. You must be confusing them with with some other law enforcement body. Um, and thank thank you very much for the compliment, mate. It's much much appreciated. I'm glad I brought back some some good memories for you, um, even if you, you maybe caught the wrong end of a. A French truncheon. It's just, go. it's, it's, it, it, it's mad, mate. Like, like what you said. That, that we've always been known for our, our, fo- our away fan following, and you just saw, like, mm. in the pictures there, what, what it meant to them, and, mm. and stuff like that. And I'm guessing on the other games as well, like the, the other games, we probably took some, some fans over, uh, over when we could. But that just team spirit, the, the, and it just had everything, didn't it? So yeah, no, yeah, and and yeah. like you say, two two defenders on the pitch, two mm. defenders, you know, or, or I say two defenders. Obviously, yes, we had more than that on the pitch playing as a defender, but you know, we had two default defenders in Steve Potts and Rio Ferdinand, and we've gone mm. there with a one nil deficit. We've conceded a, an away goal in the first leg. Incredible, incredible character. The only shame. The only shame of it, I have a vague recollection of a photograph of Steve Lomas following that, and he was holding the Intertoto Cup. Oh, I don't wow. know if anybody's. I don't know if you've ever seen it. No. It's it's probably a little bit bigger than the Ashes Trophy in the cricket, but not much. It was a little tiddly thing, tiddling <laughs> little thing. And I remember the photograph. Steve Lomas almost looked embarrassed. He's like, is this it? it, it. (laughs) But it wasn't about that so much. It was, it was about, you know, yeah, all right. It was nice to win a tournament, but you know, it it wasn't something that was held in particularly high regard. It was more about the door that he opened up, you know, which was the, the, the UEFA cup. Sadly, that didn't go quite as well. But there you go. Better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all, as they say. Yeah. So, but there you go. So that is my game, numero uno. So loved it, mate. We come Love back it, to mate. you. Thank you, thank you. Glad, glad that it brought back some uh, some good memories for some people watching it live. And and obviously, if people watch it delayed, then hopefully there's a few people that go, oh yeah, wow, I remember that. So, mm. Milesy. Over to you. What's your second my second? My second game is a seven goal thriller at Upton Park. Seven goal thriller. It is a four three victory against Sheffield Wednesday. And to put it in perspective, you just know how mm-hmm. uh, what what a moment it is. It was our first live home game of the season. This was okay. Let me just go. So that- Zoom in on this. So, yes. Talk to me about the teams there, Mr. Miles. Yeah. Put a bit so, yeah, so, on the bones. Yeah. So, in goal, we had uh, the usual uh, Shaka Hislop, uh, Steve Potts, Rio Ferdinand, Razor Ruddock, uh, the the little wizard Joe Cole, Mark Vivian Faye, Mark Keller, Frank Lampard, Trevor Sinclair, DeCanio, and One Shot. So, uh, uh, as you can see there, it looks like we're playing three at the back again uh, with wing back. So, yeah, no, very packing out the midfield. And, obviously, uh, the two up front causing a lot of problems. So, yeah, no, I'm very impressed with that team, to be honest, mate. Um, looks good. Looks good. Yeah. 
And um, yeah, no. So yeah, it was a very very good game. Um, we started off very well. So um, we had a corner uh, on the right hand side with the Canio. Um, played the ball to the edge of the box. Uh, falls to Lampard. Had a great shot. Then fell to Sinclair, who hit the shot and it was saved. And then the ball fell to Mark Vivian Foe, who then just kicked the ball up in the air. Uh, but then the ball fell to um, uh, what uh, one chop, I should say. And then one chop with a great header on the left hand side managed to flick it straight into the um, into the other top corner. Goalkeeper had no chance, so we really off really off started well. Um, before the Sheffield uh, Wednesday got an equaliser, a um, Mark, Martin Tyler said a very interesting stat, Gatesy. West Ham have had four red cards in their last seven games. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Yeah, so uh, our disciplinary wasn't great this season, was it? <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, 1-1. Yeah. Um, uh, so, the ball coming from the right... brilliant, no. Yeah. So, 1-1. One, one, the ball coming from the right-hand side uh, fell to the builder, who then lays it off to Rudy, who hits the ball from uh, the edge of the box. Shaka his lap, if I'm being critical, maybe could have done better, but he got a su- the power just beat him and it f- went went in the net. And uh, yeah, it was one all. That was it for the second half. First half, sorry. In the second half, um, the builder again involved. Skilled Sinclair with a step over, then had the pace to beat him. Just one to the left foot, straight to the back post, took everyone out of the game. And uh, Vin Yonk with the volley, 2-1. Uh, nice. moments later, the, yeah, yeah, so yeah, not, not the start we wanted, really. Um, moments later, the Canio <laughs> with the ball on the left left side of the penalty box, uh, started driving, hit the ball left, good save from the goalkeeper, parried the ball to Lampard on the volley, then it was stopped on the line. <laughs> so, the, she, we Sheffield Wednesday probably thinking they got away with one, then the ball fell to Sinclair who then started driving into the penalty box and the goal scorer of Vin Yonk took him out and the penalty. So getting out of jail and then unfortunately uh, a penalty happened. Um, De Canio stepped up um, against his former club. He was more fired up, gave the goalkeeper the eyes, rolled it into the top uh, bottom left-hand corner. 2-2. Two, two. Nice. West Ham fans are probably thinking we're going to go on to win this. No, we went 3-2 three, three, down. Great ball from the left. Um, Rudy involved. Uh, and then... Uh, Bar- oh, I can never say his name. Is it Broody? Baroud? Okay. Uh, I have to get the team sheet up. I forgot his name. Uh, hang on. Uh, I think it's Baroud. Uh, Baroud? Hang on. I'm just looking now. I can't remember the play. Uh, you got Preston, Atherton, Hinchcliffe, Nolan, Walker... Alexanderson, Yonk, Rudy, Sonna, Booth, and Jibil. He must have come on Jibilda. then. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know who it was. <laughs> I, can't, I don't want to say it is, but yeah, it was a good header, diving header anyway, um, to make it to make it free all. Mm-hmm. And then, mo- uh, and then moments later, uh, Sommer gets sent off um, for Sheffield Wednesday with an elbow on Decanio. He meant it. Proper, proper elbow smash. Uh, Decanio went down. The ref had no choice but send him off. And then uh, from that free kick, we made it free all. Uh, great ball in. I think it was Razor Ruddock who played the ball in. Great ball into the box. One, one chop headed the ball onto Sinclair, who then laid it on for Mark Vivian Foe. God rest his soul. Smashes the ball with his left foot. Goalkeeper, no chance. Free all. And you, we keep saying it every week. Obviously, it was his anniversary of his death, wasn't it? A couple of weeks. I, 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 we sold him too soon, in my opinion. Yeah, but I, th- I think from memory, I think he wanted to go. Yeah, he went to he Man City, went didn't he? I don't know if he went straight. I don't think he went straight to Man City. I, I've oh, got didn't. a funny feeling he might have gone somewhere else from memory before he popped up at Manchester City. Oh, I okay. Think, I think he might have gone to France for a spell. I could oh, be okay. wrong. You might want to might want to check yeah, that, yeah. or if someone yeah. in. The, in the live chat wants to jump in and correct me. Um, but I'm fairly sure he didn't go must, straight to city. 
Yeah, it must have been because I did look at a lot of the games that become, yeah. coming at the end of the season. He wasn't really involved. It was mainly Carrick, Carrick who broke in, but um, we'll talk about that further on. So, gents, there was another goal in the game and it come to West Ham and it was uh, it was a great build-up. Um, Sinclair with the ball on the right, just plays the ball into Lampard. He, he took a two Sheffield Wednesday midfielders, took it out of the game, started driving on the box, then cut in on his left foot, beat the goalkeeper at his, uh, his front post, and he went off and celebrating. And people say, I, I, I don't care what anyone says, people say he's not a West Ham fan. What he meant when he scored them goals in the current and blue, I don't think that's false. And w- when he scored this as well, w- the winner, hands up in the air, jumped straight into the crowd. It was his first goal since the opening day against Tottenham. I don't care what anyone says. He he he, he still he, he loves the club. And of course, if, of course and he's a West Ham, or at least he was. I mean, obviously things yeah. might have changed since, but at the time he he was at West Ham. You know, let's not yeah. muck about. His dad was an absolute bona fide legend in claret and blue. There's absolutely yeah. no way on God's green earth that Frank Lampard wasn't a West Ham fan. Whether he is now is another matter, but certainly at the time he was West Ham through and through. At that point. Yeah, and it just proved what it meant to him, mate. And I, I was just over the moon. Uh, like, I think, I think this was like the season when he started getting criticism. I think so. Um, but yeah, um, more criticism, not what he deserves. But yeah, pleased for him. Obviously, four three front of the everyone got their money's worth in front of the cameras. And yeah, we went on to win four three. So yeah, that, that's my pick, mate. Very good. I mean, seven goals. I mean, goodness me, that that was that was. Uh... That was some game. And again, I, I would have been there for that one. So, um, yeah. Seven but look goals. how late the goals were, though, Gates. Okay. You know, 70, 70 mm. and 76 to turn it around. That oh, yeah. Quick, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was uh, yeah, it was a bit of an arm wrestle. Like you say, we went 1-0 up. Then it was 1-1. One, one. Oh, Andy Booth. Then they go 2-1. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Andy Booth, 2-2, two, two, then 3-2 three, down, then 3-3, three, three, and then 4-3. Three. I mean, yeah, it was just back and forth, back and forth. Um, anyone that paid their entrance fee got their money's worth. That's for that's for absolute certainty. That Alexanderson, Nicholas yep. Alexander, he played for someone else, didn't he, in the Premier League? He played League. for Everton. He that's also played for yeah. us. Did he? He did. He had a little, a, a very brief spell with us. I don't know if, if it was... Um, under Pardew, I think. Oh, my, okay. I've got a funny feeling it might have been Pardew. Um, but just about um, Mark Vivian Foe, I just checked. He left us and went to Leon. He went to Manchester okay. City on loan. Oh, he didn't he actually Man sign City for them. On okay. loan. He, never, he never signed for them. And it was in 2003 at the end of that season when he had the, um, obviously, his, oh, his tragic and untimely death. Um, playing for his national team, Cameroon. Bless him. Yeah, just horrible, horrible situation that unfolded there. And obviously what happened with um, Christian Eriksen, quite a lot of uh, echoes of that. But fortunately, obviously a different outcome for um, Christian Eriksen's sake. Um, just looking here, yes, he was um, Nicholas Alexanderson getting, getting on to him. He was Sheffield Wednesday, Everton, and he did have a spell on loan with us in 03-04. So that would have been under Pardew. Eight appearances, yep. zero goals, and he then went back to Gothenburg. Um, but yeah, there you go. Anyway, I'm I'm going to try and trump you. Oh, I'm I know you try are. And trump you. <laughs> yeah. You've got seven goals. Yep. I've got nine. <sighs> Yeah, I wanted. I wanted. Nine. I told. I told you in the chat, didn't I? Because we tell them a couple of days in advance what games we're doing, and I said, I want. I want the Audi Martin Tyler to do this game. <laughs> ah, now, now, I've I've got a confession to make. You haven't got the Audi Martin Tyler, and there's a there's a reason for that. Partly okay. due to time constraints on my part. Um, yeah. But also due to the fact that when you go on YouTube, and you find this particular match. And I've looked on both the season review and I've tried putting finding it other sort of methods and whatever. Yeah. And I've I either had on one version the 
second goal, which was John Monker. I tell you what, let me just get the, the match card up while I'm waffling. <laughs> right. OK, so and zoom in. And I think I can safely say this is the, 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 the most entertaining game of football I've ever witnessed with my own eyes in you know in front yeah, of I can me. imagine man. um you know a goal every 10 minutes on average and I mean all right as I said um for those of you that know my first game at Upton Park was a 10 nil victory for West Ham against Berry which is still our record victory and you know although that contain contained 10 goals and this one only contained a meager nine you know to be fair you know when you win 10 nil against a lowly team, it's, it's after a little while, you're sort of like, wow, this is a little, this is nice, but to be honest, it's a bit boring <laughs> sort of thing. Whereas this game was anything but boring. I mean, let's, let's have a look at the teams, shall we? So Shaka, his lot started as the goalkeeper, but he didn't finish the match as the goalkeeper. Unfortunately, he broke his leg and he was replaced by an 18 year old debutant by the name of Stephen Bywater, who was, um, as as nervous as a cat on a hot roof. I mean, he was he was bless him. He 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 was just yeah, so so nervous. Gary Charles playing as well there. Rio Ferdinand, Igor Stimach, and Scott Minto made up the back four. Then we had Joe Cole, Frank Lampard, Steve Lomas, and John Monker as the midfielder. And then Trevor Sinclair playing just off of Paolo Di Canio as the forward. Then we look at Bradford City. The goalkeeper was Aidan Davison. Gunnar Haller was in front of him alongside Andy O'Brien, David Weatherall and Wayne Jacobs. Peter Begree, who um, some people might remember from his Everton days and I think Man City as well. Uh, Jamie I'll just Lawrence, know from who Sky, was known... his annoying voice. <laughs> um, Jamie Lawrence, who was uh, quite well known for his colourful barnets. Stuart McCall, of uh, formerly of Rangers and Everton fame. Gareth Wally. Dean Saunders, your mate. Love him. Dean, Dean Windass. Dean Windass, the journeyman pro who... Um, Scored goals wherever he went, in fairness. And he scored goal a goal for Bradford here. So, um, now, yeah, so when I went onto YouTube, the the second goal for Moncur, it was really funny. When I watched it, um, so let me just get rid of that. Okay. Uh, yeah, nervous as a cat on a hot roof. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um. So you look at it on, on YouTube and the West Ham second goal was a goal by John Monker. And it was a cracking goal. Um, but when you watch it on YouTube on the season review, um, is it a season review? There was one of them where, where Monker's goal was cut out for some really, really <laughs> odd reason. I don't know. It, it, it was. It was crazy. I was sitting there watching it. Paolo Di Canio had the ball. He laid it off. And and you see John Monker sort of arrowing in on it. And then all of a sudden it cuts and he's wheeling away in celebration. And I'm like, what? <laughs> My good goal. It was a really good goal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to watch it on YouTube and I'm just going to commentate sort of like as I, as I see it, because there's a little bit in the middle where I'm going to have to, use a little bit of artistic license because the footage cuts out. So bear with me. I'll do the best I can. But we start off a corner from the um, Bradford City. I won't do it in commentary mode. I'll just do it as an explanation. OK, um, so it was a corner played in. Now, at this point, Stephen Bywater is now on the pitch. Um, Shaka's gone off with his broken leg um, and we are in the 30th minute. So half an hour has gone. So Bradford have a corner on their right-hand side. It's whipped in by Peter Begree. And coming in with an absolute bullet header is Dean Windass. The marking was a bit slack, to say the least. But the ball drops in the six-yard box. He gets his nut to it and just powers it past Stephen Bywater, who had absolutely no chance, in fairness to him. And you're sitting there and it's like, Bradford, they're sort of like towards the bottom end of the table. And we're sort of like, you know, a team that's qualified for Europe this season. We were fifth 
last season in the Premier League. This shouldn't be happening at home. So we're one nil yeah. down. Anyway, so you whiz on now, and we're now in the um, 35th minute. So only five minutes later, Trevor Sinclair gets an equaliser. So basically what happens here, Gary Charles has got the ball on the right-hand side. He cuts inside. He plays a left football into the penalty box. Comes off of Frank Lampard, who plays the ball in to um, Lomas. He's drops to the deck in the penalty box. He loses possession of the ball. But coming in on it is Trevor Sinclair just outside the six-yard box. He gets his right foot to it and sweeps it past Aidan Davison for the equaliser. And wheels away in celebration. The crowd's going mad and all the rest of it. And you think, OK, you know, this this should be, you know, normal services resumed. Hopefully we can sweep this lot away and, and put them to the sword. So a couple of um, couple of minutes later, what was it? Um, 43rd minute. Yep. 43rd minute. So eight minutes later, Paolo Di Canio is on the right hand side. He lays the ball off to his left and coming in sort of like from midfield onto the ball as it's going from sort of like from right to left is John Moncur. He runs onto it and probably from about 20, 25 yards, let's fly. And as he, as he makes contact with the ball, and I don't know, you know, this probably helped it in a, in a funny sort of way. He almost seemed to slip over and the ball's just flown sort of like into Aiden Davison's top right hand corner. He's sort of like, he's made a bit of a didn't didn't get in the same postcode, so we're two one up, and you're thinking, oh, that's brilliant. Just looking at it, there it was a left foot shot. It's gone flying in, as I say, as he's as he's made contact with the ball. It's almost like he's lost his footing, but that kind of helped in a strange sort of way. Um, Because if he, if, I don't know, if he hadn't lost his footing, he probably wouldn't have got the contact that he did get. It wouldn't have, you know, done what it did. It probably would have ended up in row Z of the. Um, Trevor Brooking stand or the centenary stand, I think it was at that point. Um, it was called. Um, so you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, it's two two minutes to go now till half time. Surely we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll get in with a 2 1 lead, you know, re you know, reevaluate, reset, and then go out in the second half and, and blow them away. Well, in typical West Ham fashion, that's not quite <laughs> what happened because before the break. Bradford have an attack. Um, there's a high ball, um, if you can imagine, sort of like on the on the in the penalty box, but on the right hand side. Um, the ball drops, and you've got Dean Saunders with John Moncur at his back. And as the ball's dropping, Dean Saunders just crashes to the ground. I think, uh, bearing in mind this was 1999, I think it was, wasn't yeah. it? 1999. Um, just looking at the date just to make sure. Um, hang on a minute. And it, what, was it 99? Yeah, it was 21st of November. No, that's yours. Hang on. Let me get rid of that. Very unprofessional. Um, yeah, no, yeah, 12th of February 2000. Okay. So obviously, we're now in the year 2021. I mean, you know, the game back then, you could get away with a few challenges. But, and I think this one, to be honest, watching it back, I think it was a bit soft. Um, Dean Saunders, I think he's felt Monker. He's seen the ball coming down. I think he's thought, Do you know what? I'm going to chance my arm. I think he went down a bit easy for, for myself. Um, the referee's blown, pointed to the spot, and you're like, ah, oh, bloody hell. Um, I'm when I was at the, the game, I, again, I'm sort of like behind the goal where the penalty was taken. So Stephen Bywalt was bouncing around, and Peter Beagre runs up takes the penalty, right-footed. He sends Stephen Bywater the wrong way. Stephen Bywater dives his left. Beagree fires it in to his right low, makes it 2-2. Two -two. He wheels away, celebrating the equalising goal. And he did his little somersault, which was a yeah. little bit of his trademark. Um, and you're sitting there and it's like, we're going in half-time. We've lost our goalkeeper mm. with a broken leg. Um We've got a kid making his debut, 18 years of age, who, who just looks so nervous. It's ridiculous. 2-2. Um, two, two. Oh, well, let's hopefully it will get better in the second half. Well, huh, you say that. 
But this is West Ham, ladies and gentlemen. So we're now two minutes into the second half. So this is still early, early days. The ball's played out to um, Gunnar Haller, who's sort of like just on the right-hand side, Bradford's right. Now, it comes to him. He takes a touch, gets it out of his feet. He takes a right foot strike from probably about 30 yards. It's straight, more or less. It, it's it's in the, maybe not straight at Stephen Bywater, but it's close enough to him that really this should be just a routine catch. Something he does in training every day since he's been a goalkeeper. Comes straight to him. And instead of him getting a hold of it, it's like, I don't know whether he was trying to pat it down or I don't know what happened because it's just come out of his hands. And as sort of like it's it's popped out, you've got Rio Ferdinand and um, Jamie Lawrence. Um, it's it's basically hit Jamie Lawrence more than Jamie Lawrence has, has got a contact on it. It's, it's more or less just fell into his path. It's hit Jamie Lawrence. It's spun past Stephen Bywater, who's literally nowhere, and it's rolled into the net. And Bradford, two minutes into the second half, a 3-2 up at Upton Park. And you're thinking, what the right hell is going on fans, here? Right in front of their fans as well, wasn't it? Yeah, they, they were fans, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. This is, they, they were in the centenary stand or Trevor Brooking stand. Um, I think it was still the centenary stand at this particular point. And you're like, oh my goodness, this, you know, we've lost a goalkeeper with a broken leg. We're free to down at home at Bradford. Surely this can't get any worse, can it? Oh, oh, you think? Well, where <laughs> where are we now? We're now in the um, 51st minute, ladies and gentlemen. So a mere four minutes after that calamitous goal that's con been conceded by young Stephen Bywater, the ball is at the feet of Jamie Lawrence, the same player that's just scored that fortuitous goal that Stephen Bywalt was just basically thrown onto his shin. Um, he's got the ball at his feet. He's just slightly right of the D, probably about 25 yards out. He's making a run towards the um, the penalty box. He's got Stimatch at his back that's trying to sort of like get the ball off of him. He can't get it. He sort of cuts inside. He lets go with a left foot strike as he as he as he make contact with the ball again he sort of like he kind of falls over and the ball just sort of loops up and over i mean and, and again i think it's bad it's positioning mad goal, from the it? goalkeeper bad bad positioning from the goalkeeper it sort of loops over him and he this, he's got this big red mane of hair not a mane but he's, he's sort of like an afro of red dyed hair and he wheels away celebrating with his fans and all the rest of it and we're four two down, and you're like, "Oh, you've got to be joking!" Well, whilst all this was going on as well, there was a little bit of a a running battle between Paolo Di Canio and the Bradford City back line. And I remember, I think there was three. There was there was at least three, but the one that I really remember was where he's cutting from the West Ham left into the penalty box. And I, th I think it might have been Gunnar Haller that's just took his legs from under him. And it was it was a stone wall penalty. No ifs, no buts. I mean, if Dean Saunders's one was a penalty, then this should have been a penalty just the same. But his legs were taken from under him. The referee, who was a guy called Neil Barry, just went, no, no penalty. And this was, I think, probably the third penalty appeal that Parlo had had. Because he had, he had two in the first point, half. Yeah, yeah, it was, too it was at this point that Parlo was just like, oh, forget it. And Harry tells the story that basically Parlo goes on a bit of a strop and he literally just sits down on his haunches, sort of like that. And he's sort of like, he's 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 motioned like that, that he, he's like, no, just take me off. This geezer's not giving me anything. It's not happening today. And he's just sort of like, he's sitting down. He's, he's sort of like he's doing a Dimitri Payet in the middle of a match. He's He's gone on strike and he's like, no, boss, I no play. And <laughs> Harry know. sort of like, you know, come on, come on, Paolo. You know, we, we're losing 4-2 at home. You know, all the rest of it. Um, and they're like they're singing Paolo Di Canio, <laughs> Paolo Di Canio. And it was like all of a sudden that seemed to give him this little burst of energy where... 
he, um, you know, all of a sudden he was like, oh, I need to sort of like get a little bit of like a the, sort of wiggle like the best here. player in the world. That's what he must have felt like. Yeah, it, it kind of inspired him, if you like. It sort of like, you know, it, it sort of like rejuvenated him, the sort of like the singing. Yeah. And all of a sudden he sort of, he, he gets up and he starts playing. And there's a ball that we get to uh, the, where are we now? Um, so we ran about the 65th minute there or thereabouts. And the ball's played forward from West Ham right-hand side. And Paul Kitson's in, in the penalty box at this point. Now, Paul Kitson, um, he came on as a substitute for Gary Charles in the 57th minute. Um, so it drops to, to Paul Kitson. And I think if it had dropped to Paolo Di Canio, probably, and he'd have gone down, referee would have waved that away again. Oh, no, he's Italian. He's play acting. It's just what they do. This was less than the blah. penalty than the Paolo ones. It was, yeah. So he's got, um, I think it was um, Peter Beagree at his back. He's brought down um, Kitson. It was a challenge, or it might have been O'Brien, actually. He's brought him down in the six-yard box. And the referees all of a sudden pointed to the spot, said penalty. Now, this is where it gets a bit interesting, because the last penalty that we had was um, against Aston Villa. And Parlo took it, and Parlo had it saved by David James. Um, Frank Lampard, who was a, you know, we know was a very good taker of penalties. Um, he's sort of like, he's got the ball and he's like, I'm taking it. And obviously Parlo's like, no, 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 no. It's, it's mine. I'm taking it. And it, this seemed to go on for, for quite a while. They're sort of like, you know, I'm taking it. No, I'm taking it. And it just sort of like went back and forth. And eventually... Parlo being the sort of like the senior player, he he wins the argument. He wins the argument. You know, you you go over there. You'll sit down and shut up. And he just sort of like so. Parlo's got it, and it, you know he's now got to score because he's missed his last penalty. He's now just had an argument at four two down. He's had an argument with another player, basically pulling rank and saying, "No, you're not taking it. I'm taking it." So he's got to score. He absolutely, he's put the pressure on himself now. You know, if you take a, a penalty off of someone else that's sort of like taking it, then you you can't you can't miss it. You can't have it saved. It absolutely has to be buried. Did we ever doubt him? He puts it to the to the right hand um, post, gets it inside. Um, the keeper dives the right way, but wasn't even in the same postcode. Um, and Parlo runs towards the the um, the goal grabs hold of the ball, turns to the centre circle. It's 4-3 now. There's still plenty of time to try and get an equaliser. And who knows after that? So it comes back. And now we're in the um, 70th minute. So we're talking five minutes after that goal has gone in. We're 4-3 we're down at home. And, you know... Can we salvage something? Well, Steve Lomas has the ball at his feet. He's on the right-hand side as far as West Ham are concerned. He's bringing the ball forwards. He slips the ball into the penalty box. Lovely little through ball. It just goes... He, he could have put that through the eye of a needle, that particular ball. Mm. Um, it comes to Trevor to Joe Cole initially. Then it comes to Trevor Sinclair. He's on the sort of like the six-yard um, box on the right-hand side. Joe Cole's just sort of like hanging back a little bit. Trevor, the goalkeeper comes out. Trevor Sinclair just sort of like offloads it slightly behind him. Joe Cole's there. He, he fires it in. Equaliser. Upton Park goes absolutely mad. Joe Cole runs away. He jumps into the um, Bobby Moore lower. Um, he's just scored his first goal for West Ham at Upton Park in an equaliser. But there's still 20 minutes to go. But at the minute, all the momentum's with West Ham. And we then get as far as the um, 83rd minute. So we've got seven minutes left. It's still locked at four all. And I'm sitting there thinking, which way is this going to go? You know, is there another goal in it? Is it to West Ham? Is it to Bradford? Is it going to finish four all? Who knows? It could finish five, five, six, six. I've, I've just, you know, anything can happen in this game. It's just ridiculous. Well, Bradford actually have an attack at this point. They're sort of like, they're pinging the ball around, um, but we get the ball in the sort of like, you know, at, just outside our penalty box. We make a clearance. It goes into midfield. There's a header from Paul Kitson. 
He heads it on to an on-rushing Paolo Di Canio. We're still in our half and he cuts down the left-hand side. He's racing away with the ball at his feet. He's, he's got a defender in front of him. He cuts, he cuts inside to the right. Then he goes left again. He's still got another defender. He's now in the penalty box. And you're thinking, what's going to happen here? Is it going to be a penalty or not? Probably not. It won't be because it's Paolo Di Canio. And he's just sort of, he's weaving in and out. And then sort of like, he, he stands up. He's got the goal in front of him. And then he offloads the ball to his right-hand side. And just outside the penalty box in the D, it comes to Frank Lampard, who controls it with his right foot, steadies himself. And then with his left foot, he bends it into the top corner, the right hand side of Davison's goal. And it ends up in the back of the net. And honestly, it was just absolute pandemonium. We've just pulled it back from 4-2 down. And it's now 5-4. Frank Lampard, the son of Frank Senior, who's the assistant manager, West Ham legend, Two-time FA Cup winner, um, has just scored the goal. Um, just absolute, just ble bedlam. It's just gone completely crackers and we've just won the game. You know, we saw the game out, the remaining seven or so minutes, saw the game out, won it 5-4. And as I say, I can, I can honestly say all the games I've seen of football, whether it involved West Ham or whether there was another team involved, whatever, this was by far the most entertaining, the most exhilarating, the most, you know, uh, just, you know, one minute we're winning, then we're losing, then we're winning yeah. again. Our goalkeepers broke his leg. We've got a kid making his debut. We've got Joe Cole. We've got Frank Lampard. We've got Rio Ferdinand, you know, youth team products that are on the pitch. And, you know, so many emotions that were going on that day and to, to come away with a 5-4 win was was just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. And, uh, you know, anyone that was there that day and I was I was one of them and just looking here, there was 25,417. One of them was me. One of them was my best mate. And I think we had our money's worth that day. Definitely. There you go. And Mark's just jumped in. He says, if he remembers correctly, filling this Bradford match, uh, we brought in keeper Sasa Illich on loan from Charlton, who conceded four goals at home to Everton. You are indeed correct, Mr. Brown. Uh, we did get Sasa Illich in. Um, and yeah, it is his debut. He um, he didn't exactly cover himself in glory. And uh, he only ever made that one appearance. So that kind of tells you all you need to know. Um, we need to send highlights of the Bradford match to Hollywood. Who's playing Decanio? Milesy, do you fancy that gig? No, I'm, I'm too big. I'm, uh, and you need a little person. So, <laughs> um, you wimp. Uh, Danny Dyer. Oh, yeah, good you idea. Want, you fucking want some. <laughs> yeah. So, it's nine o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we we yeah we can we can do that. Why not? Evening, Tom. Why not? Yeah, how you doing, Tom? Hope you're well, mate. Um, we've also got a neural uh, two. I don't believe we've we've been acquainted, but welcome. Thanks for joining yeah. along. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and, and give us a like. We would greatly appreciate it. Um, Tom, uh, these days I used to have cricket training on a Saturday, one p.m. till three. So always listen to the first half of the games on the radio on the way home. This one in particular was absolutely mental. Honestly, mate, try being in the middle of it as it was unfolding before your very eyes. It was just like, what am I watching? What am I watching? And like I say, I've I've seen quite a few games of football live and on sort of like telly and, and highlights and whatever else. I, I don't think I've ever, I've seen a game that's come close to it, quite frankly. I really don't. Maybe I'm biased, but nine goals. 4-2 down at home against the team that really you shouldn't be 4-2 down against. Yeah. All the things that happened, pff, crazy. The only thing that was missing, the only thing that didn't happen in this game was a sending off. It's the only thing that didn't yeah. happen. I think that, if that and, happened... And maybe it... aliens landing. Yeah. Or a streaker. Um, I, I actually got nicked for that. No, I'm only joking. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> There might be footage of that around. I don't know, but so that is that is my match number two. So we've had the Inter Toto Cup final, second leg, um, which I did the the uh, Aldi Martin title for. This one, as I say, apologies. 
I couldn't do it because um, the footage that's on YouTube, there's bits missing from it on. Um, it was actually the, the season review, which is what I was watching. Um, no, not the season review. The season review, actually, if you watch the season review, which lasts on YouTube, one hour, 13 minutes and a no, one hour, 40 virtually. Um, if you watch that game on that, the John Moncur goal is missing. You see the ball being offloaded to De Canio's left. You see Moncur just coming into shot. And then the next thing you see is Moncur wheeling away. He scored. So I couldn't use that. And when you put in Bradford, uh, West Ham 5, Bradford 4, there's a clip that comes up. But interspersed with that, you've got interviews with this player, that player, and it, it just gets in the way. So that was why in the end I just went, I can't mm. use this. So I'm just going to should have through. should I'm have sent an email to the club gate. See, I'm disappointed. Uh, uh, do you know what? I was thinking about writing to my local MP. So <laughs> um, what's his name? Hancock, I think his name is. No, sorry, he's, he's busy with, with his secretary at the minute. <laughs> Actually, my my, my MP isn't isn't uh, Matt Hancock. Um, that's a little bit of a poetic license on my part. Um, it'd be quite funny if he was though. Um, but I think, I, 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 but I think a lot of the MPs are probably busy at the minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some more than others. So, but I I couldn't possibly comment. We'll, we'll save the we'll, we'll save. What's that bloke show on the Sunday? That politics bloke, Andrew saying. We'll save oh, that, Andrew for that show. Oh, yeah, that's I, the I one. Watch yeah, that all the time. I watch that yeah. all the time. Uh, our series link it, mate. Our series link it as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, do, do you ever notice that they don't answer questions? They don't yeah. answer questions. None of them. Yeah. Doesn't matter if they're Labour, yeah. Conservative, Lib Dems, Green, Monster Raven, <laughs> Looney Party. You ask them a straight question and they kind of circumnavigate round it, but they won't answer it. You know, for Christ's sake, mm. just answer the question. You know. Yeah. Anyway, Milesy, match number three. Right. So obviously you've had nine. I had seven. I've got five though. I've done well. I've got a five Ooh. now. I've got a five five Ooh. goals. Brutal. So um so my one goes to the twenty second of April two thousand and the five nil smashing against the Mid Midlands Coventry City. Co Coventry. Coventry. Yeah. Uh as you can <laughs> see, gents, we've that. got a diff we've got a random goalkeeper. Ian Foyer, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. The American, yeah. Um, he, so yeah, he's we've really got... unlucky. He was. Um, oh, was he? He, he, he? Yeah, he got injured. He got injured in. A, I can't remember. If it, I don't know if it was this game or one of the other games. He he um because he had two spells at West Ham. He had sort of another spell three or four years earlier, and he came back. I think he had a spell at Luton and Wimbledon, if I remember rightly. Um. But he got he got injured, and mm. I think he only made about sort of maybe half a dozen appearances, maybe not even that for West Ham over his two spells. And uh, I thought he was a good goalkeeper. In fact, a little little piece of useless information for you: when he Come made on. his debut for West Ham, he was the tallest player in the Premier League history at that point. Oh he wow! Was six foot seven and a bit. Oh, Crouchy must just be a little bit tall. Crouchy must be a little bit taller. I think I'm trying to remember who the tallest goal, no. who the tallest player in Premier League history. No, is Zigic. because he isn't Zigic. Now. Zigic, is it wasn't Zigic? it? Okay. I think he was six foot eight, wasn't he? <laughs> Big boy. Big boy. Yeah. Because um, who who was it? Um, oh, and the other thing, little little um. <laughs> nugget of information for you. He went on to become a little bit of a Hollywood st star. I don't know if you know this. Oh, really? He did because uh, years later, Ian Foyer, uh, are you a fan of Alien versus Predator? I'm going to say I'm not. I might shock a few people. I can't get into them sort of films. Well, anyone that ever saw the film Alien versus Predator Requiem? He played the yeah. Predator. Oh, wow. Yeah, and another useless bit of information. Just while we're on it, he is the former brother-in-law of Mickey Rourke. I think he was married to his sister or something. Oh, fair enough. 
Anyway, yeah. I'm I'm rambling on now as I as I sometimes yeah. do. Um, over to you, my friend. Take us through the team sheets. Yeah. So uh, after Foya in goal, we've got Rio, Igor Stimach, the Chilean Massif, Javiang Margas, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Scott Minto, Michael Carrick, Frank Lampard, Sinclair, and what about this for a front three, Gatesy? Paolo mm. Di Canio, Freddie Canute, and Paolo One Shot. Talk about go for it. Threat match. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so commentary lineup with uh, uh, Hedman, David Burrows, uh, mm. Irish West Ham legend Gary Breen, um, yeah. Colin Henry, Barry Quinn, John Useless. Useless, he John is. U- useless. John useless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gary McAllister. Oh, Ronan Num- Numan. Or Norman? 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 <laughs> Paul Telfer? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 even though he played for Tottenham, he played for us as well. I, I, I love Robbie Keane as a forward. Yeah. Uh, and, and Noel Whelan. Yeah. I remember him. <laughs> Leeds, wasn't he, at one point? Yeah. So, mm. who's ready for some goals? Crack on, my friend. Lay right, it so, thick. Right, first goal. As usual, Di Canio is involved. <laughs> He's got the ball. Was he? uh, yeah. Uh, breaking on the right-hand side. Nutmegs the uh, Coventry defender. Then passes it to Carrick. Uh, oh, well, sorry. Let me read this comment. Go. Ah. Ah. Nice fact, Tom. Sorry, where was I? Canio, Canio, yeah. Nutmeg, nut, nutmeg, nutmeg, the defender, a uh, Coventry player. I should say, I don't think he was a defender. Then passes the ball to Carrick. Carrick's forty yards when he's got this ball. Takes two, two touches. He meant it to get it in his stride, and I, he was so unlike. I, I regret not. I regret, and I don't not putting him in my hammers eleven. But mm. this player, I've never seen a player so gifted on both feet in my life playing for West Ham and uh, yeah. he, he, he hit a shot with his left foot 30 plus yards from the center of goal, drilled it straight in the bottom right hand corner. First goal. And he done the celebration with his arms out and went straight to the crowd. What, what, a, what a time for him youngster coming in the side and gets the goal. One nil second goal to Canio with a corner surprise, surprise <laughs> on the right hand side. Uh, t- great ball in Margus unmarked great header in the bottom left bottom left hand corner 2-0 first goal for the club the Chilean I think that was I think it was that his only goal for the club I, th- I think it was I think it was his yeah. only goal yeah you know the story yeah, so, about him didn't you he got he, he didn't come back oh he, he, he went back to Chile and then come back with Claret and Blue they, they, they found that he'd, he'd escaped through a window apparently and buggered off back to Chile <laughs> could only happen to West Ham and he retired he, he just went no that's me I'm done and he retired he, did not, he didn't I, sort I of like just say oh t- I want to go back to Chile he went no I, I'm, I'm giving football up mate I've had enough I, I, I reckon they kept taking him to the pie and mash shot or something <laughs> that might have that might have persuaded him to stay you never know you know not again I can't, no more liquor no more liquor <laughs> it looks radioactive <laughs> Um, this doesn't look like second a burrito. half. Yeah, yeah. A jelly Hills burrito. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Tacos. Yeah. Chili con carne. Even though it's not yeah. Chilean, but yeah, I love a chili con carne. Anyway, food again. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I had I had Greg's like earlier, and I and I ordered like four sausage rolls, and I thought, yeah, Ooh. I'll have them for like yeah four. Yeah, nice. for the family. All right. Like after, yeah, do you know what so I got like, a little bit earlier on? Go on. Saying about food. You know the rib man, Mark Javot. Oh, don't. Oh, I got, I got, I got some rib meat. I, I ordered some rib meat from him. I got it, got it two days ago. A kilogram of pulled pork, and a bottle of the oh, barbecue man. sauce, and a bottle of the hot oh the barbecue. You didn't go for the hot one. Holy fuck. <laughs> Nice. No, I got got the barbecue and, and the holy fuck. Nice. So, 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. Haven't actually had the the, the pulled pork. I've got that for um uh, a little bit later on, but yeah, yeah. What tonight? Mark, Mark, Mark's, <laughs> Mark's a lovely, lovely guy. Do you know what? Yeah, I once turned up. I don't know if I should say this, but I'm not saying anything uh, derogatory against him. I'm, he is actually quite the contrary. I um because obviously we'd got to know each other sort of like a little bit sort of. Um, over the time I've been going to Upton Park and then latterly yeah. London Stadium. And I turned up one day and I don't know, I can't remember how it happened. But I'm there with me four kids and uh, four kids, three kids and me, so the four of us. Four and, gates, are you just saying you're not telling uh, me? Shh, shh. Um, don't tell the <laughs> wife. Um, it was, I was drunk, you know. Um, and all I, I realized, shit, I've got no money. And Mark, no. you know, bless him. No, Mark turned around and said, "Listen, don't worry. I know you. I know you'll, you know, you you won't sort of like take the piss." He he actually sorted us out a, a rib roll each and said, "Pay me next home game." And I was like, "Wow!" Yeah. And you know, next next home game, I, I rocked up. I went, "There's your there's your money for last week," and you know, here's the money for the the food this. So, you know, Mark Mark Javo, the rib man, it, you know, any of you guys that are watching, if you if you go to London Stadium next season and, and he's knocking about, um, he's an absolute top bloke. And if you've not had his rib rolls, trust me, you are missing out. Give him a give him a check out. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I rem I've, I think I've had it I've only had it once, Gatesy, because I, I I I don't normally like eating when I'm when I'm out and uh, but I, I was really hungry this day, so I, so I did. But um, I think I might have to take a detour every now and again, to be honest. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Beautiful. Finest rubes your money can buy. Mm. Yeah, no, definitely. Anyway. Anyway, where did we I, get to? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> we started talking about food. Yeah. <laughs> no script, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. No script. Oh my god, I don't want to know anymore, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet that was a ring of fire, wasn't it? <laughs> I bet he got home a lot quicker. <laughs> he walked he home. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd make sure you got a spare pair of underpants, mate, <laughs> just in case. Anyway, where, where was I? I'm totally I've got no off. idea. I, th I, think, I think we mentioned Javier Margas, and then I, I went off on a tangent. Oh, yeah, I'll finish my food. story anyway. So, yeah, yeah I ordered I mean, four sausage rolls. What come? Uh, so I thought I'd have them for, like, dinner and, like, a snack. So um, yeah. So I went and had one about 6 o'clock, and then my dad, my dad had a look. I was like, oh, I'll have one of them. Oh, they're nice. And then, like... Um, <laughs> I went out and grabbed another one. So obviously I've only had two. So my belly's starting to grumble and, and I can like smell food downstairs as well. So this is like even more of a torture, but uh, I might have it. to. I think I can smell, smell sweet potato fries. Ooh. I love sweet potato fries. <sighs> yeah, me too. With a load of salt, load of salt. Oh, got to be done. Got to be done. Love it. Anyway. Uh, uh <laughs> Welcome to our like, latest late, latest episode of, of Can't Cook, Won't Cook. <laughs> oh, ready, ready, steady, cook. We're gonna yeah, do it. We're gonna do it. Yeah, what... we, 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 me and me and Gatesy are gonna both go live in the kitchen on Saturday morning. Full Tremaine kitchen. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? My wife's a trained uh -huh. chef. She'll she'll pass on who, all of her years of experience and tips, and it'll it'll be fine. I'm sure I I won't set fire to the kitchen again. Um. <laughs> How you doing, Kieran? Hope you're well, mate. Kieran, <laughs> Kieran, you've come at the right time, mate. It's not even talking about West Ham. No, nah, we're just talking about food and random stuff. Please tell Please, me you hold on. Oh. It's what's nothing in the oven? There's, 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 there's nothing wrong with sweet potato fries, Tom. If you don't, yeah. If, please tell me you've tried it. More healthy for you as well. Exactly. Mm. Very true. Anyway, Goes down. anyway. Oh, right. That was it. <laughs> we were talking about the Chilean sensation he scored. So yeah, that was it. You did. Oh no, I wouldn't pick over him, Tom. It's just what's cooking. It's just what's cooking. I'm not yeah, saying I'd pick him. 
Pop Tom, a chip any shop chips. In a storm. Any pop in a, a chip storm. shop chips. Oh, Savaloy and chips in a chip roll. Load of salt and vinegar. Oh, God. When, oh. Or, a sausage, oh, or sometimes I'm greedy and get both, a sausage and batter and a Savaloy. Do you know what? I think I might be getting fish and chips tomorrow now for dinner. <laughs> I think you've convinced me. Oh, if you were but if you were offered the choice, would you pick sweet potato fries? Depends what it's with, Tom. Depends what it's Depends with. If it's with like chicken then. skewers, if it was with like chicken skewers, I'd have sweet potato fries. But like chips, like burger, I'd have chip shop. I like chips. Yeah. And Kieran, yeah, it is. It's just the usual drivel, mate. It's same old, same old. <laughs> We're just talking a load of old crap. Uh, and I'm in so the middle cool. of talking. And I'm t- in the middle of talking about a game, Kieran, as well. You can just tell what. <laughs> I think we've been talking about the game for about the last 20 minutes. And we've, we've not even <laughs> talked about the game, if that makes sense. What? So, just so, Kieran, I'm talking about the West Ham 5 0 win against Coventry, and we're 2 0 up. <laughs> this one. <laughs> just, yeah, just so you're in the loop, Kieran. Yeah. So, the second half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll, we'll, oh. hang on. We've, done, we've done sweet potato fries, we've done pulled pork. <laughs> We've done holy fuck sauce. I've done an advert for the sausage Vietnam. rolls, Greg's sausage rolls. Is there anything we haven't covered? Dessert. <laughs> oh bloody hell, no, we haven't. Yeah, we're going to have to cover that. Anyway, we'll do that after the match. <laughs> anyway, Maybe. second half. Second half. Carrick picks up the ball, finds the canio on halfway. Then he just starts running with the ball, taking on the, the yeah the whole Coventry team pretty much. Why then not? takes a uh, just takes a touch, takes it out onto his right foot, and then unleashes a shot from about twenty five yards out, straight in the bottom left hand corner. Three 0 West Ham. Come on, we're fucking massive. We are. Um, That's because then, we eat sweet potato fries with abundance. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> food. <laughs> and, and and pulled pork rolls. <laughs> Sweet potato fries and pork pork ro- oh, rolls. What could, what, and holy fuck sauce. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, just not telling it. Not telling anyone. It's holy fuck sauce. <laughs> That's mean. That is mean. Yeah, no, it's fine. Oh. It's just barbecue sauce. You know, you're fine. Don't worry about it. There's no, oh, no spice. I think I'm going to have to. I think I'm going to have to order off the rib band now. What have you done to me? Sorry, mate. What are you delivering now? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, probably not. You'd have to wait a couple of days. It comes by FedEx. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting fact, uh, Mark. Sorry, I'm going off that. My dad still works there, though. But yeah, they don't. They stopped the car production, but obviously they still make the engines. But yeah, yeah, 3,000 jobs. Yeah. Mad. Bad, isn't it? Mr. Venn's in the building. Scott, you're late. But then again, you've probably been working again, haven't you? And we're, the and year we're talking I was about food. School. Yeah. Yeah. Which is Scott, your line of work. Sweet potato fries or normal fries? What are you going for? Mm. <laughs> You're go on to, to be continued. Yeah. <laughs> Quite possibly, Tom. <laughs> Quite possibly. He had a really big nose, didn't he? In fact, it was a big nose and he'd been broken about 25 times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. Uh, <laughs> we're we're not aiming for that. We're aiming far nah. higher than that, Kieran. Don't you worry. Yeah. 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 Mike's turned up. How you doing, Mike? Hope you're well. Oh yeah, Mike. DM us when you want to come on and talk about season plays as well. Yeah. And same for everyone or food. else. Or food. Yeah, food. We're do, we're yeah. doing we're doing Gatesy and Miles's kitchen on Saturday morning. If you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make cheese on toast. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna make cocoa pops. Cocoa. <laughs> Turns the milk chocolatey. <laughs> They're great. They're frosted though. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. So for, fourth goal. Ferdinand with the skills started running from in from his own half. Manages to get to the end of the box. Ball finds Di Canio, who then on the left, and then Scott Minto overlapping. Takes a touch, takes it round them, then plays the ball back to Decanio in the box. Decanio controls it, does a little swivel, 
then hits the ball on the left left foot straight in the bottom corner four nil. That was a really good goal, really good goal. And uh, yeah, his usual shirts shirt celebration four uh, nil. So another another goal fest, Gatesy. But mm. this this goal was um, the, the the build up to this the fifth goal. It deserved the goal, but unfortunately it wasn't. And it was Michael Carrick again involved with another left foot shot, but it was a good save from the goalkeeper. Went out for a corner. And then yeah. Di Canio again, another assist for Di Canio. Ball played played in. And Freddie Canute, six yards out, free header. And he did his usual French uh, celebration. And the Hammers went on to win 5 0. That is probably the longest game I've ever done on the review. <laughs> I'm laughing. None well, of it was it? talking about football. That's it. Most of it was about food. And that's a very good point. I haven't noticed Simon on here for a while. Where is he? Where is he? he I spoke to him on Rossi. I spoke, I spoke to him. Yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah, I saw. He, he's, he's around. Oh, what, he's, he's bypassed us. Simon, yeah. come oh, back. He's, he's, probably, he's probably watching Rossi's show now. He's a traitor. Oh, a quiz. no. Oh, no. We'll, we'll let him off. Russ is, Russ is a good yeah, no. guy. Yeah, I know. I know. So, we'll let him off. So, anyway, gents. Oh, kangaroo oh, bollocks. A... Oh, that sounds like something off of um, I'm a Celebrity. I'm not yeah. too sure. I've had kangaroo burgers. I've had kangaroo steak. I'm not too sure I'd go kangaroo bollocks, I've got to say. Shaken, not stirred. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I'd leave anyway. that well alone. <laughs> oh, Mr. Hatcher. Oh, that could get messy. Oh. That could get Hello, Mrs. Very Gates. Messy. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's just back from picking up the boy from work, so she just oh, wandered. Oh God! In, so, yeah, as we're talking oh. about food and football. Yeah, yeah. Good luck, Mike, and hope 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 they look after you and uh, you have fun. Yep. And just remember, what happens on the stag stays on the stag. It's on the stag. Definitely, definitely. So we'll come to my game now, shall we? Or should we just carry on talking about um, our eating habits? Uh, we'll probably end up talking about dessert halfway through your game or something. So you might want to carry yeah. on. Yeah. Sticky toffee pudding I'm quite partial to. Spotted dick. Oh, are you allowed to say that? Because it's very politically correct world that we live in now. Are you allowed to say spotted dick? Or do you have to say spotted Richard or something like that? Maybe. Yeah, so I'll call it Spotted Dick then, because I'm not into political <laughs> correctness. I couldn't care less. Nah, uh, for me, my go-to dessert, apple crumble and custard for me. Not not Harry's favourite, jam roly-poly. Oh, that, that's, not, that's not great. That's, you don't that's, like uh, it? It's not my favourite. I like a Victoria oh. sponge as well, fresh Victoria sponge. Yes, Mike. Yeah, I've got to say, I do like apple crumble and custard, I've got to say. That's not bad. Rhubarb crumble? Simon! Simon! What? Where is he's he? in. Oh, he, he's in the chat. He's turned up. He's turned up. I've just seen him. He, Simon! He is. <laughs> Where have you been? Where yeah. have you been? We've missed you. We've missed you. I, re I reckon <laughs> what's happened, I reckon that, that Scott sort of like sent him a message saying, get on the forged a little bit quick. They're, they're having oh, he loves withdrawal the symptoms. They're missing you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, listen, there's not many desserts I don't like. I got to say, there's not many. Yeah. There's, you could probably name a whole raft of them. And uh, spotted phallus. Yeah, it, pro it probably <laughs> is. Tom, it probably got to be really. In fact, it's probably got to be non-gender specific. So it's yeah, they probably have to call it a spotted object so that they don't offend people. What a load mm. of bollocks. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I angel, yeah, good. You're here all week. You're here all week. Oh, Little Angel shit. Delight. What flavour, though, Simon? What flavour? Oh, I'm not really a massive fan of that myself. I mean, I, you know, it's all right, but I think I'd rather have the uh, the apple crumble and custard root. Yes, yeah, Scott, um, would you believe it? What we got? He's been busy. Oh, best man at your mate's wedding. Busy writing the speech 50,000 times. I'll tell you what. That's less than I did it when I did my brother-in-law's one. Oh, my word. Yeah. Really Simon, just, just, that is. I've got it. You'll just talk fine, about man. food. On the speech, just talk about food. People will love it. <laughs> just talk about food. Talk about, <laughs> talk about West Ham. 
talk about yeah. a bunch of donuts that you see doing streaming, talking oh, about nothing in particular. Oh, we probably that, should oh, get back should... to talking about the football because yeah. I've actually got a really special one lined up for you guys. <laughs> really special. Oh, I like so, so, sorry, Gatesy. I think Kieran's got the best name for it. <laughs> What's that? Kieran's name. Ah! <laughs> Spotted Todger. <laughs> that is brilliant. Well done, Kieran. I think you've won. Yeah. Yeah, Simon, I agree with you about the strawberry. Yeah, strawberry for me as well. Yeah, yeah. As I say, I'm not a massive Angel Delight um, fan, but I'll, I'd have it if it was there. So speak about the burger van. Why not? Why not? Shall I get on with... Uh... Oh, hang on, what's this? I bought the Canning Town Len. Ah! Yeah. That's nice. Very good. Very good. I've just been told that my, my wife did because my wife is a catering manager in a school and she um, they did Angel Delight in school by all accounts. It's on the menu. What could what could possibly go wrong? Probably you've got some kid that has an allergic reaction to it. That's yeah. probably what could go wrong. Lactose. Honestly, you want to see the list of things, the list of sort of things that they've got to you know, avoid this and avoid that. And, oh, you can't have this. And they're lactose intolerant and gluten intolerant. And they've got sort of like certain dietary requirements because of their religion. And it's like, just give them a bag of dust and be done with it. Mm. There's not too many calories and, and additives and all the rest of it in that, so surely that's all right. Shall I get on with my game, Milesy? If you if you want, Kate. <laughs> Let's. We said we Here said we, we said with the, we said with only the two of us, we're not we, we'll be not short and straight. We're doing well. It's, an hour and forty seven minutes. Yeah, we're just talking shit. Um, okay, I'll just go full screen with this one, ladies and gentlemen. So the last one I did was the Bradford game, which finished five four, which, as I say, is the greatest game of football that I've ever witnessed with my own eyes live in front of me. Well, this one might not have been the greatest game, but I can probably say hand on heart that it contained the greatest goal that I have ever seen. A sheer moment of genius. Genius. By, by Michael Hughes. Canio. No. no, actually, <laughs> Michael Hughes's goal was very good. Very yeah. good. In fact, all three goals that were scored in this game were very good. But Paolo Di Canio's goal on the eighth minute was just, what has he just done? And just to sort of, you know, I again, I was in the Bobby Moore lower. This goal was scored in front of the centenary stand. So it was the opposite end of the pitch to where I'm sat. And I'm sat there with my best mate and a few people that we got to know through the years and all the rest of it. And when... Sinclair plays the ball across and we can see Decanio making a move. Ball's dropping. He goes sort of like he sort of like jumps up in the air. He does that scissor motion. He makes the contact. The ball just flies. Absolutely flies. Neil Sullivan makes the dive and he might as well not have bothered because he was never going to get it. And the net bulges and there was this split second between when the net bulges and we started celebrating where we're literally just looking at one another going, what have we just seen? We just, there was that sort of like the in, uh, little moment between those two things, the goal being scored and the celebration starting where we literally just looked at one another with just sheer, just, could not believe what we'd witnessed. Seriously. Um, now, I've had to be a little bit creative for this one because, again, when I looked on YouTube, um, they, again, for some inexplicable reason, for reasons I know not, when I went onto YouTube and put in um, the season review, as the ball comes in from Trevor Sinclair, all of a sudden, it cuts off to Paolo Di Canio wheeling away and celebrating. You don't actually see the goal. So I've had oh, to be God. a little bit creative here. I have got commentary of it, but I've had to do it in two distinct pieces. I've used two separate bits of footage. I've got one for yeah. the Di Canio goal, 
and then another one that is the Canute goal and then following on from that, the Michael Hughes goal. So there's two separate bits of footage that you've got coming your way, ladies and gentlemen. As I say, it's just the way that YouTube sort of did their edit. Whoever uploaded it onto YouTube, they edited it and cut out the Vicanio goal. And I was like, right. So I've had to sort of do it by other means. Anyway, so let's just have a look at these teams, shall we? So West Ham lined up. Craig Forrest, the Canadian Oak, in goal. The defensive axis of Rio Ferdinand, Igor Stimach and Scott Minto. We then had a midfield contingent of the late Mark Vivian Foe, Frank Lampard, version two, Steve Lomas, the captain, John Monker, very underrated player in my view, um, Trevor Sinclair, Paolo Di Canio and Freddie Canute. Um, if I just whiz out here, um, we've got Mark Keller came on in the 89th minute for John Monker. For Wimbledon, we had Neil Sullivan in goal, who was a Scotland international. He wasn't Scottish, though. He was born in Sutton. Um, Kenny Cunningham was at the back, along with Chris Wilmot, Marcus Gale and Alan Kimball. Your midfield was Trond Anderson. I uh, do not remember this guy at all, but this was around the time that the manager of Wimbledon was a certain Egil Olsen, who was the former manager of the Norwegian national team. In fact, um, if people remember the, um, the 93, 1994 World Cup qualifying process when we didn't qualify for the USA World Cup, we got beat by um, Norway, who were managed by Egil Olsen. Um, and he was a guy he used to wear... Um, Wellington boots, as I remember. So that's probably why you got a, a Norwegian contingent here. Um, Neil Ardley, um, another midfielder. Robbie Earl, the Jamaican international. Michael Hughes, formerly of um, Upton Park. Jason Yule up top with Andreas Lund, who I've got no recollection of whatsoever. So there you go. Anyway, get rid of that. <coughs> it's not covid <clears throat> it's not covid i just yeah anyway so i'm going to hit the play button and we're going to see the the, the canio goal first and then when we come back i'm then going to hit play for a second time so that you can then mm -hmm. see the rest as i say it's just the way you know I couldn't do anything about it, people. It is what it is. No so worries, we'll have, we'll sure. have the Decanio goal. And if you've never seen this, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, <laughs> mate, special. So, far away with the ball. Good stop by Earl. One back by Foe. Shifts it out to the right to Trevor Sinclair. Steadies himself. Crossfield ball. Di Canio on the volley! What a goal that was! Paolo Di Canio! That was sheer genius! Unleashed an unstoppable volley past Neil Sullivan in the Wimbledon goal. Beautiful cross by Trevor Sinclair. Pinpoint accuracy to find Paolo Di Canio. And he hits it on the volley. Across Neil Sullivan, who made the dive, but was not anywhere near it. Absolute brilliance from the Italian. That was absolutely crazy goal. Crazy, crazy goal. And it's, it's still, I mean, that's 20 years, 21 years old now. Yeah, I've, 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 I've saw the it comments as well. And and like what like what Mike said and a few others, the ball from the ball from Sinclair as well. That that goes out, out, out under the pitcher as well to get that inch perfect as well. But yeah, no, it love was, it. It was a driven cross, but it was pinpoint accuracy. Pinpoint oh, I love accuracy. that. I love that, Scott. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> His comment hurt. I was about three foot two and didn't see him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it was a fantastic ball from from Sinclair, and uh, yeah, I I I can certainly say it's the best goal I've ever seen 
with my own eyes unfold in front of me, not one that I've seen on telly. Um, I, I still think that probably the Maradona goal against England in 86 is probably the best goal I've ever seen, you know, happen on the telly. But this is definitely the best goal that I've ever seen live. Um, hopefully I didn't disappoint, Scott. Hopefully I didn't yeah. disappoint. Um, and yeah, I, I was the same as Kieran, as I say, all of us in the Bobby Moore lower that was sat near where I was sat when the the net bulged. Before we celebrated, it was just, we literally just jaws open. And has he just done that? Has he just done what we think he's done? And and then there's that realisation. Yes, he has. Oh, great. Now we can celebrate. You know, um, mind you, these days it probably would have been sort of like ruled out for VAR because someone's toenail would strayed offside or some yeah. other nonsense but, like but, that. But like you said, though, it's, it's the real Martin Tyler and Andy Gray. The fact that it was live on Sky and they, they just didn't know what to say either, did they, mate? <laughs> that, yeah, it was, they were just like, has he just done that? But of course they can't sort of like do anything other than the sort of like try and fill in the space, but they were probably sitting there going, what have we just seen? So want to see the rest? Yes, please. Let's do it. Moncur shifts the ball out to the right-hand side. Sinclair finds Canute. Pass Sullivan 2-0 West Ham. On his debut, Freddie Canute. Gets the second goal for West Ham. The beautiful find again from Trevor Sinclair, who's set up the goal for Di Canio in the first half. And he's set up Freddie Canute to get a debut goal. Past Neil Sullivan. Nothing he could do there. Great finish into the bottom corner from the young Frenchman. Oh, finding Hughes. Hits it. Oh, that's a fantastic goal by the Northern Irishman, Michael Hughes, who used to ply his trade here, of course. Beautiful goal. And there's a ripple of applause from the Upton Park faithful. Look at it again. He chests it, hits it on the volley. Beautiful finish. Sweeps it past the goalkeeper's despairing dive. Wonderful effort there. Some some good goals there. I mean, three yeah. very good goals, but one goal stands head and shoulders above it. So, um, Tom says best goal he's ever seen live. Pyatt's free kick against Palace or Parker in the 3-2 win against Wigan. Mm, yeah, okay. Two good choices. My, my, but, um, my, my, mine for me is Carroll's against Palace, the volley. Mm, yep. Yep. I'd I'd still say that the Canio's Yeah, I wasn't there. I wasn't there trying, like live. No, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I'd, I'd I'd say that was probably a very very close second, but it's got some it's got some competition because now I stop and think about it. The the Pyatt goal against Palace is I, I think it's the first time I've ever seen a guy lining up a free kick with about seven opposition players in the wall. And he still managed to bend it, get it up, get it down, put it into the top corner. And Wayne Hennessy's just watching it. And he's like, that's never going. Oh, shit. <laughs> Go to, I've got it now. We've got another series. We have to oh. do each person in their top 10 West Ham goals. Everyone has to come on and talk about it. There we go. We've got homework for people. We've got another series to do. Side series. Ooh, blimey. We've got more side dishes than than a buffet. What's going on? Yeah, there we go. We've got another show. Exclusive people in the chat. It'll be coming to you soon. So get thinking. Top 10 goals. But do there have to be goals that they that people no. have seen happen no. live or just No, what they what they mean to them. So it doesn't have to be the best goal. It's their top 10 goals. So it could oh, be no. like like your it first game, West Ham, went to, yeah, yeah, West Ham. So top yeah, yeah. ten West Ham, West Ham goals. You've heard it here first, people. So you got thinking. We've got another mm. show for you. There you go. 
There you go. From the from the brain of the man that likes turbo shandies. Just, I can't get me head around turbo shandies. I'm like, what is mate, that? Mate. I've never mate, even heard of like it until I, said, I met you. Yeah, I've got it, yeah. Yeah. Twelve o'clock I'm getting to the pub on Saturday. Twelve o'clock. <sighs> Chicharito handball goal versus Fulham. <laughs> I remember that goal. Controversial. <laughs> and Mike thinks it's a good shout. So you got you got a thumbs up from Mr. Hatcher. Well, that's both yeah. our three games done. And you've got a little extra little bit of um something yeah. to, to bring to the table, haven't you? Because uh yeah, as so... I say, you're you're basically taking the part of jazz today. So yeah, what else so... have you got up your sleeve, Mr. Miles? So first of all, I'd like to um, say the league table um, where we finished. I know Gates is going to do that with, the, with regards to the attendances, yeah. uh, but I just thought I'd let you know, uh, like some. Basically, I might as well just read the table out. It's probably quicker. So, yeah. um, Man United. Um, I think this was one of the highest records in the, in this season. Got ninety one points. Oh, that um, is a lot. Which is quite, yeah, that is a lot, isn't it? Uh, I think the highest. What is, did someone get 100? Man City get 100, I think. Yeah, I'm sure they did. And I'm sure they scored 102 goals. Yeah. Is it 100, 100 points and 102 goals or 102 points and 100 goals? Yeah, something goals like that. Or the yeah. Other? yeah, so in second place was Arsenal, 73 points. So definitely far behind. Uh, third was Leeds. So this was Leeds um, back in the day when they were good. Yeah. Um, Liverpool, Liverpool got the fourth spot. Uh, Chelsea finished fifth. Uh, Villa finished sixth. Sunderland finished seventh. <laughs> uh, Leicester finished eighth. Uh, West Ham finished ninth. Uh, Tottenham finished tenth. Um, oh, what a shame. Close to no cigar. And the two uh, mid um, uh, North East sides, Newcastle and then Middlesbrough. Everton thirteenth. Coventry fourteenth. Uh, sorry, Tom. Southampton fifteenth. <laughs> Uh, 16th Derby, 17th Bradford, and the relegation teams were Wimbledon, Sheffield Wednesday, and Watford. And of course, Wimbledon and Sheffield Wednesday have not been seen in the Premier League since. Yeah. And Sheffield Wednesday are a massive team. Massive, massive team. Mm. So, Mike's just saying what, that the, the senior, Frank Senior against Liverpool, 2 2. Um, I think I remember that. Uh, not that I would mm. remember it, obviously, because I wasn't there. But I've seen it on yeah. footage since, and it just bent round Ray Clements, and yeah, he, he put it in the top corner. I've, I've seen that goal. It is a special goal, to be fair. Yeah, right, right. So, uh, get a bit of trivia. So, people in the chat, um, can anyone tell me who the top goal scorer was that season? Gates, he probably knows, but let's see if anyone else gets it. What? Go, in go, the league go. Or? Yeah, in the league, not for West well, Ham, the whole Premier League. Well, go, Mr. go, Berth go. Is just, just just had a shout there, which is a, probably a decent one. Yeah, he's got it. In, yeah, he got it. Goals did? He, how many goals did he get, Tom? Oh, it was was it about thirty something or something stupid? Are we talking in all competitions or just league? No, in the Premier, just in the league. Uh, I'm going to go twenty five. Mm-hmm. More. Twenty eight. Thirty. Wow. 36 games, 30 goals. That is that is really impressive. And he didn't get many England caps, did he? No. No. And at the age of 26, he was then. Well, it seems like he's yeah. been around forever. Um, Alan Shearer was second, 37 games, uh, 23 goals. Respectable. Yeah. Um, the deadly duo of uh, Dwight York and Andy Cole, 20 goals and 19 goals. Um, nice. Michael Bridges for Leeds got 19 goals. He was another player that was really unlucky with injuries. Yeah. Really unlucky. Number six, uh, 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 31 appearances, 17 goals, Thierry Henry. Terry. Mm. Ready? Seventh highest goal scorer in the league. Paolo Di Canio, 30 appearances, 16 goals. He weren't bad. He mm. weren't bad. Yeah. Um, I won't go down because there's 15 what I've got written down, but this is followed by Niall Quinn, 
Chris Armstrong, Stephen Everson, Tony Cotty for Leicester, 13 goals. Still bagging him in. Yeah, Pahars for Southampton. Oli Gunnar oh, Solskjaer Marianne with Pahars, 12. Oh, Marianne yeah. Yeah. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer with rocket. 12. Carnu with 12. And in 15th place, 23-year-old West Ham, 35 appearances, 12 goals. Paolo Wanchop. Wanchopio. Yeah. Right, you guys are going to have fun with this now. I've got assists. Ooh. Who was the highest assist assists? in that season? It's a joint first. Oh, hello. Two people. Two people. Is Come on, it... people, in the chat. Uh, Ryan Giggs. Nope. Okay. Is He's it fourth. Um, a, a perceived top six team? One of them. Okay. Same club. Same club. Okay. Beckham? Yeah, 15 assists. Wow. In fact, yeah. um, Scott beat me to it. He, he went Beckham as well. Uh, former Hammer in his later life got 15 as well. Is he still playing for a top? Is it another top six club or perceived top six club? No. They, they, no. They, were high up there, they were high up there every year. Mid North East. Oh. Black and white. Not Norberto Solano. 15 assists he got. Yeah, Nobby Solano. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Never would have said that. <laughs> yeah. In, in third like place. Nobby Solano. In third place, is someone close to our hearts? Okay. Who do you reckon he is? Di Canio? Yeah. Really? Th 13 assists he got. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Not bad at all. Your one, Gatesy, you got that right. Fourth. First one you said. Wife beat a Ryan Giggs. Mm -hmm. um, fifth. Anyone guess? Nine. He, he was on there in his own. Skulls. Nope. Oh, wow. P play, plays for Team. Arsenal. Bergkamp. And joint sixth with, uh, there's a few of them on there, so I just uh, want you to say some names. Uh, I'll give you a clue. One plays for Everton, one plays for Arsenal, one plays for Tottenham, one plays for Villa, and one plays for Sheffield Wednesday. Everton. I'll come back to that. Eng Who else? English. 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 Everton. Left winger. Who's a left winger? Left winger there. Or left mid. I think. Played played in the five one win against um, Germany. Bambi. Hey. <laughs> um. Yeah. French French Arsenal player. Eight Two. assists. No. Perez. No. Vieira. No. You forgot it's him. It's Henri, a bit... then, isn't it? It's got to yeah, be Henri. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Henri. Tottenham. Striker. Uh, Armstrong. Sher no, Sheringham had left by then, hadn't he? Everson. Yep. Yep. Sheffield Wednesday. Oh, Sheffield Wednesday. Uh... He, scored, he scored in my game. What I've done the Sheffield Wednesday game. Oh, crumbs. Um... Not Vin Yonk. Was yeah. it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Aston Villa, the Ajax. last the last one. The last one. Villa. Yeah. This is for assists. Yeah. Julian Jochim? Nope. Uh Gareth Barry? Nope. Uh, I'm trying to think who well done Tom he's got it he's got it Tom's got it well done Tom 
Hang on. Where is he? Oh, Merce. Yeah. Well done, Tom. Oh. Wow, Everyone wow, forgets wow. that he plays, plays for him, didn't they? Right. Yeah. Right, gents. So what I'm going to do, uh, well, the first one is probably the easy one. Who got manager of the season? Uh, it's going to be Fergie, isn't it? They got 91 yeah. points, surely. Yeah. Right. Premier League player of the season. Oh, so I'm guessing it was a United player. No. Okay. Henri? No. Um, Shearer? No. no doesn't, um, play for a top, doesn't play for a top six club. Well done, Scott. What is he? Hang on. I was just about to say Phillips, actually. 34 goals yeah. or 30 goals. Yeah. yeah. That would yeah. have been my next one. Honest. All right. <laughs> I've got three more awards. Ready? So, PFA yeah. Player of the Year. I like this. I think I'm going to introduce this for every week. I like this. Like, to set, like, this is like. PFA Player of the Year, 2000. Um, hmm. Kevin Phillips? No. Uh, no one got. Giggs? No. Skulls? Beckham? No. Uh, right club. Henri? Oh, it's a Man United player. Uh, who was their main goal scorer? Was it Dwight York? Nope. Oh, crumbs. Schmeichel? No. Erwin? No. Keen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Got a few guesses here. Henri, Daniel, York. Pally. Yes, no, he'd moved, he'd moved on by then. I'm fairly sure. 99-2000. He was history. So, so this one, yes, I'm going to try it. This, this one, I'm not even going to say the club. I want to see if anyone gets this. So, this PFA Young Player of the Year. Can anyone guess? I'll, I'll let everyone have a few guesses first to see whether it brings back some memories, and then I'll slowly give some clues. Joe Cole. No. I was going to say I didn't think it was, but I thought ah, shits and giggles. Oh, hello. This could be a good one. No. No. Okay. Uh, nobody Google it. Don't you Google it, you cheeky sods. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Young player. PFA Young Player of the Year. Yeah. And it's not a top six club, did you say? No, no, no. No, I didn't say that. No, this one. Oh, okay, this one. Yeah. He's a top six club. Ah, right. Okay. Uh, who would have been a young player breaking through at this time? Ash uh, Ashley Cole. No. Nope. Ah, uh, Scott's gone Rio. Nope. Jules the Builder. I don't think he was that young, but nope. Tom's gone Jules the Builder. Nope. Or Bob to his mates. All right, I'll narrow it down now. Top four club who finished top four in this season. Ooh. Harry Kuehl. <laughs> Boom. Well done, mate. Boom. Well done. Well Harry done. Kuehl. And I didn't Google it. I didn't Google it. That was completely off me head. Right. Right. So this is the Footballers Writer of the Year Award, the last award what I've selected. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you a clue. It's one of the people who have won the award already, just to make it easier. Henri. No. Keen. Yeah. Yeah, he got he got footballers right of the year. Yeah, no, he, to be honest, this was around the time he was in his pomp. So, yeah, again, oh. he was he was probably one of them players that when he when he was not on the opposition team, you were like, oh, I hate the geezer. Um, but put him in, in your shirt, and you, right. you'd absolutely love I, the geezer. I've, I've, I've liked doing this, but I think people might Google it for next week. So I'm going to come up with something different. For next, for no, next week. No, don't Google so, uh, it, guys. You spoil all the fun. You know, come yeah. on. Let, let's play yeah. the game. You know, Mole so, will do this next week. Don't you sod start, start Googling. <laughs> We're going to have some fun with this. There's no fun if you all go, boom, this is the answer. You Googled <laughs> it. Yeah, a good yeah, good, cool. good man, Scott. Keep it that way. Yeah. Keep it that way. Right. Bosco yeah, cool. Balaban, I remember him. He was <laughs> dog shit. He was absolute <laughs> dog shit. Yeah. No. One more question, please. 
Go on. Oh no, Scott's asking for one more question. Oh, uh, well, go on. Find another question uh, around this time. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, Casey, right, do you want to do? Uh, uh, you you do your things about. I'll do the, my little the bits and bobs, and I'll find I'll find okay. another quiz for someone to do. I'll I'll bore you guys shitless with this. So this has been hammer time of our lives. Season 99, 2000, a European tour, ladies and gentlemen. So, our record in the FA Carling Premiership this season was we played 38 matches, won 15, drew 10, lost 13. We scored 52 goals. We conceded 53. Therefore, the goal difference was minus one. We had 55 points and we finished ninth out of 20. Um, so, we've, you know, in three seasons, we've had three finishes within the top nine. We had an eighth in season 97-98. We had fifth 98-99 and now ninth in 99-2000, as well as a European campaign. Not bad at all. Um, <clears throat> Cup exploits. Um, bit of a mixed bag. So in the FA Cup, we went out at the first stage for a Premier League team in the third round. Uh, way to Tranmere. We lost 1-0. Um, is it Prenton Park they play? I'm sure it's... Is it Prenton Park that they play, Tranmere? Anyway, wherever it is they play. Um, we lost 1-0. Great. Um, League Cup. Now, <clears throat> we haven't touched on this one. This is the year the infamous match Manny Omiyinmi was involved. <clears throat> so, we had a fifth round tie against Aston Villa. We drew it 2-2 after extra time and it went to penalties. And I'm in the Bobby Moore stand lower and the penalties were being taken in the goal in front of me. And the scores were, um, you know, it was sort of like right in the melting pot. And who stepped forward to take a penalty, ladies and gentlemen? Who do you reckon, Milesy? Who do you reckon stepped forward to take a penalty for Villa? Season 99-2000. Penalty shoot oh. out, penalty for Villa. And Who do you think turn No. Oh no. Oh no. Do you want a clue? I don't know. Go on. England International. Merson. Nope. England International. Gareth Barry. Oh, you're almost there. You're almost Ooh. there. Oh, almost. Almost for sale, Gareth Barry. No, Just... oh, you've gone very cold now. You was you was quite quite hot with Gareth Barry, but now you've gone Darius for sale. Oh, stone cold, mate. Stone cold. Stone cold. Don't look at the light. Southgate. Jack, I think there's... Yes. Southgate. Southgate. He stepped up for a penalty. He had it. I can't if you remember if he missed or he had it saved. Um, we yeah. ended up winning the penalty shootout. Great, we're through to the, um, I think that would have been the quarterfinals that put us through to. Um, the next day, I wake up and find that there's talk that we might be getting slung out of the tournament. Why? Because we brought on a sub called Manny Omiyinmi, who played in the League Cup at an earlier stage, um, I believe for Gillingham, if I remember correctly. Um, and between him... And the club secretary at the time, who was a guy called Graham McCrell, um, they they forgot about it. They just completely it, they, it popped out of their head. They had no recollection of it. Doug Ellis, who was the chairman of Aston Villa at the time, he was saying we should have been slung out and this, that and the other. End result was we had to replay the tie. And in typical West Ham fashion, what did we do? We lost 3-1. There you go. And I've just realised I've made a spelling mistake on this banner. I've put the Intertoto Cup, but there's no R. So it's the Intitoto Cup. Um, <laughs> we got to the final. We won it. We lost the home leg against Mets, nil one. But we then went to Mets and won three one to win on a three two aggregate, which then qualified us for the UEFA Cup proper. <clears throat> uh, so we get into the um, UEFA Cup. Uh, we play in round one, we play Osiek. We won 6-1 on aggregate, 3-0 at home, 3-1 away. We then come across former European champion Stoya Bucharest. Um, and that was as far as the adventure went. We lost 2-0 in Bucharest, 
nil nil draw at Upton Park, and we went out to nil on aggregate. That was that. Um, top goal scorer in the league was Paolo Di Canio with 16 goals, and in all competitions, he did it again um, with 17 goals. So he got one extra goal somewhere along the line. Hammer of the year, Malsey. Who's your money on? Oh, Di Canio. Of course it was. Couldn't have been anyone else. I mean, the only other person that probably was in sort of like uh, even close to him, sort of like, and that would have been a distant second, was Trevor Sinclair. And he had a cracking season that season, but Di Canio was on a completely different level. Um, and we finish it off with attendances. So a highest home attendance was 26,044 which was the last game of the season against Leeds United in the Premier League. And I remember this game very well, very well, because something happened at this game, as far as I was concerned. Um, I took my work's van to work, uh, to, to the match, right? And very stupidly, um, I had my tools in the back and I turned up to my van and you probably know where I'm going with this. My tools were nowhere to be seen. They were nicked from the back of my van at this game. I found that they what they'd done is they'd cut the seal around the, the rear quarter window, taken the glass out, smashed in the, the back grill, grabbed hold of my tools and, and gone. And that was a lesson learned. I've never left my tools in the back of the van from that day to this. Anyway, you live and learn. Lowest home attendance, 7,485 against Heronvane in the Intertoto Cup on the 28th of July. Um, our average home attendance that season was 25,093. Have I bought you enough time, Mr. Miles? Um, what I can do is to prove I, I, I haven't got really anything else from this season, but we can go back to last season and do the top goal ah, scorers. Yeah. I, know, I know the answer to this one, Mr. Burford. Do you know the answer to this? Is it Monignier? No, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Burford, isn't it the Hawthorns? Fairly sure it's the Hawthorns. Come back to me, Tom. Right, yeah, so I've not really give we'll we'll, we'll do we'll do a couple. This is gonna put everyone going back to last season, but I thought it's better than nothing because the quizzes they're they're all related Ooh. to different different ones. Is that launched? That's that's launched last week. Okay, um, well, we we may well do, Mister Brown. We may well do. Obviously, yeah. you guys in the live chat, if you all want to jump in, you're quite welcome to. I'll, I'll have a look at that. Cheers for reminding me, Mark. Didn't realise that it would um they'd launched it again, but I suppose we've got plenty of time. We've got until the season starts, well, I guess, to get actually, that together. Actually, I've got some questions. I've got some questions. For this, uh, yeah. for this season, this season, one second, one second, one second, gents. Sorry, I do apologise. Right, manager changes uh -huh. this season. Does anyone want to start having some guests who left their job? Uh, I think I know one. I can say right off the bat. Go on, mate. Go for it. Egil Olsen left Wimbledon and was replaced by Terry Burton. Is it Terry Burton? Yeah. yeah. That was at the end of the okay. season. It was because Wimbledon got relegated that season and he was he was dog shit for Wimbledon as far as managers are concerned. He did great for Norwegian national team, but um, Middlesbrough, you know, Middlesbrough I think he also... did, Mark. I think he did. I think Foe did get sent off in that game against Leeds. Or was that the year before? Might have been the year before in the 5-1 defeat. Scott, no. Um, uh, Gatesy, we might as well stick to that club. So Wimbledon got rid of uh, a manager at the start of the season as well. Do you remember oh, who that is? That would have been Joe Kinnear, surely. Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, he exactly. had a heart attack. Yeah. He he had a heart attack at um, Hillsborough, I think it was the season before, and he never really recovered from that. Mm -hmm. Right. So Little what I'll do is to, um, let's see if anyone's in the chat who was in there earlier. 
Mark gave it away. There was a change all the way up to the top end of the country near Scotland. Can anyone guess who that was? Gates will know, but people in the chat. A what? Sorry. There was a change at a, a, a club right in the right right up the top of the country. Black and white. What new manager? Yeah. Um, hang on. That would have been Rude Hullet. Yeah, Tom got it as well. Yeah, Mark put it back in the chat. Yeah, uh, Bobby Robson uh, became manager the second of September. Wow. Yeah, well wow. done, um, Thingy as well. Scott got that another one right. Glenn Hoddle come in for Dave Jones. What at Southampton? Um, Southampton. Yeah, because yeah, he had um, he he had some allegations that were thrown his way, wasn't there? Because he he yeah. after he retired as a footballer and before he became a manager, didn't he work in sort of like child care or something like that? And he got accused of um, certain improper oh, acts, and it got them found that it was a complete load of old bollocks. But you know, for some people, you know. Some people are like, ah, well, you know, no smoke without fire and all that. And it, it didn't exactly help his career, poor poor bloke. Yeah. And there's one more. A Yorkshire club made a change. A Yorkshire club? E. Um, are we talking Sheffield Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would have been Danny Wilson? Yeah. Who come in for him? As caretaker. Oh goodness! Um, Who come in for him? That's the question. Would it was it a player that was there at the time? Uh, it's a Welshman. A Welshman. Yeah. You'll say it, and I'll go. Oh yeah, I remember. Peter um, something. Peter Shreves. Well done. Yeah, I remember him. He was manager of Tottenham for a spell, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't got think he was quiz. Welsh, but he managed Wales. I know that. Yeah. Right. Another quiz, yeah? Go for we, it. We, I, think, I think Duke done this uh, on a previous season. Shirt sponsors, yeah? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I'm not... I'm, I, I did cheat last time you might have worked it out i'm not going to yeah. cheat this time i fancy a bit of fun go for it right um we'll give we'll give it a couple of seconds so the people in the chat can uh, get ready for it as well google it but <laughs> yeah no but They're going on Wikipedia i'm gonna media as we speak but i'm not doing it in order i'm just going to name a random club do it yeah tom you've got that first one right we'll skip arsenal <laughs> he said it. Oh, he's going. Oh. He's going for it. Well, oh, we might as well go in order. Dr. Martin's West Ham. Okay, ready, gents? So, Give him a chance, Tom. Give him a chance. Okay, so Aston Villa. I might as well go Aston Villa, but Tom, you're you're uh, not correct. Oh, uh, crumbs. It wasn't NTL. No. Oh, God. Was it? It wasn't Acorn, was it? No. Acorn? Oh, that was that was later. Oh, goodness. Don't know. I don't know. I'd have, I'd have sworn it was NTL. Right, I'll, so... give someone a couple, I'll, 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 I'll do a time on it, another 10 seconds. See if anyone in the chat gets it. Brain's gone. And you'll say it and I'll go, oh, yeah, I remember. Ah, no! LDV. Yeah, well done. I remember now, because wasn't this the year that they played in the FA Cup final against Chelsea in, in the last one at the old Wembley. And I seem to remember yeah. they had it. They had those shirts and it looked like a pajama top. It looked yeah. horrible. Claret right. and blue stripes. Like what the fuck's this? Ready? Um, Go for it. Southampton. Sanderson. No. Okay. 99-2000. Uh, not Friends Provident, was it? Yeah. Hey! I just beat you, Tom. I just beat you. <laughs> Watford? 
Um, football manager? No. Well, that was that was a lot later, actually. No. Um, I remember in the eighties they were sponsored by Solvite. You know, the sort of like the wallpaper paste company. Mm. Uh, all crumbs. No idea. My 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 brain's gone. Okay. Um, it's, it's, Mr. has jumped in. He's gone CTX. A phone, phone, mo mo mobile phone company. Not phones for you. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you said it, I was like, ah, oh, that's the one. Wimbledon. LNX. No. Tiny. Yeah. Yeah. Middlesbrough. Cellnet. Yeah. Tom's on a yeah, roll. I, I think there that. is a delay, obviously, with YouTube, isn't it? That's the problem. Like when you yeah, say it, it's yeah, obviously yeah. it streams to them, so that's pro they are a bit behind. Um, Coventry. Was that when they had Isuzu and Subaru and they sort of like one was on the home kit, one was on the away kit? I can't remember which. Is that the one? Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Right. Um, Newcastle. Mm, 99, 2000. It wasn't Newcastle, Brown Ale. Uh, was You're it right. no right, it northern? Is. Was it? You're right. Oh wow. Okay. Right. Let's have a look at someone else. <clears throat> right. Let's have a look. Who haven't I done? Uh this one will be easy for the other people. We'll see how quick they remember. Man United. Sharp. Yeah. They were Liverpool. sponsored by them for a good while. Uh, yeah. Carlsberg. Yeah. Scott's got that as well. Um, Derby. Puma. No. That was actually kit manufacturer. Uh, EDS. Oh, you're on a rock. You're on fire today. <laughs> Well done, Tom, as well. Bradford City. <clears throat> oh, JCT 600. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see them on the number on plates. Yeah. Uh, Leeds. Packard Bell. Yeah. What ones have I missed? Sunderland. Reg Vardy. Yeah. Tottenham. Uh, Hewlett Packard. No. Holston. Yep. Chelsea. Autoglass. Yep. What have I missed? Is there anyone I've missed? West Ham. <laughs> uh, no idea. No idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I really enjoyed that. So yeah, like I said, um I'm gonna come up with some more stuff. I'm gonna mix it up every week. I'm gonna do different ones. I've I've looked on all this and I've found so much stuff. This is gonna be fun for next next week. I've got some other stuff what we can go through. Do a quiz, Why that not? will get everyone in the chat. Um yeah. but yeah, no, I've Cheers, uh, I've no I've I've really I've really I've really enjoyed this. I'm glad I've put this in. Uh, now yeah. actually this is it's been might really have, good might have a life in it you never know yeah so bit of fun bit of fun mm. just the two of us mm. here so we've had to make the best of it because obviously we've not got duke we've not got jazz so it's been a little bit whatever but we've had a little bit of a laugh talking about food and various yeah. other nonsense subjects along the way to keep people entertained and i'm glad you enjoyed yourself scott glad you enjoyed yeah. yourself so I think we're going yeah. to end it there, aren't we? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, Mr. Miles, thank you very much indeed for joining me tonight. Much appreciated. 
uh, I'll just start before you do your thing, Gatesy, is mm -hmm. um, I haven't put it on YouTube yet because I wanted to come up with some like dialogue and stuff like that, really. So I'll probably send that for you to tomorrow. Um, yep. Any so anyone who wasn't on here? Know that wasn't on yesterday. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So guys, so um, for those of you who don't know, West Ham Fan TV are doing an event um, this month. <clears throat> it's this month now. I forgot. It's the first of July. Um, yeah. Uh, West Ham Fan TV are doing an event with Julian Dix and Tony Cotty. Um, unfortunately, um, Jazz can't make it, and he purchased a VIP ticket, which is ninety pound. Um, and I know that guys because I'm going as well, and I paid ninety quid. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll be sitting next to Gatesy as well. So this could be a treat for you. Um, <laughs> God help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I've come up with an idea of obviously a, a, a football card. Uh, what we're going to do is a tenner a ticket and all the money, because Jazz said he wanted to, is to go to Isla. So if obviously all these 40, um, I think ideally I'd like to get all 40 done. But if if we if we don't, I'll end up offering it people for doubles eventually, if that's the case, where you can pick. Um, Mr. Burford, yeah. you pay extra. You pay <laughs> extra. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, happy. like I said. Like I said, it's over in Shoebriness, I believe. Gates has got the details, oh, but I'll put it in. So it yeah, no, I don't think it was Shoebury. I think it was. No, not Shoebury. La Hope. So it's it's Stamford La Hope. Sorry, I think it was Stamford La Hope. Yeah, it's late. So yeah, ten pound a ticket. Um, so that's four hundred pound race for Isla, and you're paying ten pound, and you're getting a ninety pound ticket VIP, where you get to have dinner and have a chat with um, Dixie and Tony Cotty beforehand. So. If anyone's interested, Duke's already bought one. He's picked West Ham on the team. Of course, he has on the 40. So one's already been picked. And um, yeah, so if anyone's interested, it will be going out tomorrow. So if you just let us know, it's another one. Mr. Burford's asking a mother well on there. For uh, some random true. reason, he always does them on the football card. No, they're not on this one, actually. There's a lot of Scottish teams, though, Scott. Not um, mother well. sorry. No. <sighs> Pick another Scottish team. <laughs> um, the date, what? Mr. Burford, um, the 29th, wasn't it? Um, 28th, on the Thursday, isn't it? 29th, Thursday. yes. The tw Thursday, the 29th of July. Um, as I say, it's at Stanford Le Hope, if I remember correctly. It's at, it's in Essex. Yeah. It's sort of like that sort of neck of the woods. Um, and, yeah, you, you the VIP ticket gets you, you get a sit-down meal with... Tony Cotty and Julian Dix in attendance before the actual event, which is a, like a Q and A session. So I believe, um, as I say, I've paid for my ticket. Mine cost ninety quid. Jazz was going to come with me, or no, I was going to go with him. Whatever, and we we're going to hold hands and you know all the rest of it. Um, but unfortunately, life got in the way of of certain things that Jazz wanted to do. This being one of them, so he's very kindly given up his ticket, and he's you know, put it towards Isla's uh, fund. So as I say, it's, it's a cracking, cracking deal. £10 for, a, a you know, a chance to win and something that's actually worth 90 quid. And you get to meet two former West Ham legends and actually, you know, have, have a bit of dinner with them and you can get your merchandise signed, selfies, you name it. So, yeah, you know, um... 10, 10 quid, you know. And Malsey, how are they going to get the money to you, my friend? Yeah, so uh, I'm just going to confirm with Roger. What I'll do is, um, um, it's probably a, a PayPal transfer to Roger, and then you'll okay. just reference reference it. I'll give you like a, do you know, when you make a donation on uh, PayPal, you do a reference or whatever. So yeah, if okay. you do, if you do, if or the just giving or whatever, you you do the reference and we'll go there. Or I might just give my, but I've not made my mind up. I'll see what Roger wants to do, but all the details will be out either tomorrow or Saturday. So, yeah. Cool. Top man. Top man. And staying on the subject of Isla, um, you know the drill, guys. She's struggling with neuroblastoma. This is a cancer that she can't get treatment for in this country. So, we at Falls from Iron and the wider West Ham YouTube community um, are behind this campaign as one. You've got the Just Giving there on the banner. It's in the description below, YouTube and Facebook. 
Um, all we're asking you to do, guys, it's it's not even going to cost you anything. All we want you to do at this stage is to copy this, paste it on your so all your social media platforms with a note what the appeal is about. If you can put any money into the pot, then that's even better still. But at the very least, just copy and paste it from the description below, YouTube or Facebook. Put it on your social media platforms with a little note for your friends and work colleagues and whatever, what it's about. And, you know, let, let's try and keep the momentum going. Time is ticking on this little girl. Um, we need to try and help her out. You know, we are, you know, we are her extended family, if you will. So, you know, let's come together and let's let's try and do a little bit of good for a little girl that's in desperate, desperate need. Um, you know, and don't forget that if any of you have joining in with our hashtag forged goals for Isla, um, you know, Milesy, we won um won two nil the other day. Um, and uh we're supposed to be putting five pounds into the pot, aren't we? But Milesy jumped up and he had the bright idea of of slinging a tenner in. Um, for the two goals against Germany. I suppose because it was Germany, he was feeling generous. So he slung yeah. 20 quid into the pot for the Germany game. And uh, I turned around and said, yeah, fine, all right, I'll match you. So I've slung 20 quid in as well. So that's 40 quid straight away that's gone into the pot. And if any of you guys are, are looking to sort of like maybe contribute, doesn't have to be 20 quid a goal, 10 quid a goal, 5 quid a goal. It could be 50p a goal. It might even be that you'll just say, look, it's a tenner for the, for the entire tournament. It's all I can afford. Do you know what? Whatever you know, whatever you can put in the pot, that's fine. Um, if you want to sort of like get it trending on Twitter, the hashtag is forged goals, the number four Isla. So forged goals for Isla. Um, tag us in at Forged Talk. And uh yeah, let's let's try and do a little bit of good, guys. Um, you know, you know, in, in these times of you know, struggle that we've all been going through, I can appreciate that sort of maybe, you know, it, it might be a bit tough, you know, money might be a bit tight, we've lost jobs and all the rest of it. But like I say, this family really are struggling. So let's try and uh, let, let's try and do a little bit of good. Um, and Tom, yeah, again, uh, appreciate that. And uh, yeah, 20 goals, if only. Um, how many have we scored so far? We've got four, haven't we? So there's only another 16 yeah. goals to go in three games. Why not? Why not? Anyway, mm -hmm. we've been rambling for long enough. Um, guys, any of you that are still with us, don't forget, if you haven't already done so, really would appreciate if you could just sling a like on the video. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified of any new content as and when we upload it to the channel. And we'll talk about all sorts of random stuff like pulled pork, um, hot sauce. Uh, what else? Greg, Greg, talk about? Greg sausage rolls. Greg sausage rolls, you know, all, all the usual thing. Um, Mr. Burford's just come in. Um, what is the only thing that whole city can do that no other English club can? I know the answer to this. It's something to do with colouring in. Um, they, it can't because all their letters are open, if you will. So there's no O's, there's no E's, there's no um, there's no letters that are closed in. So none. It can't be coloured in. I think if that's the, the, the right way I'm trying to explain it, Tom, I think you know what I'm getting at. Um, they're the only nice. club that um, you can't do that with um, in English football. You can't colour any of their letters in. All, all the letters are um, open to the elements, I think. Am I, am I, that's, that's right, isn't it, Tom? I've got you, haven't I? I've got you. Uh, yeah. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> see i i see i know random shit like this just like you <laughs> it's years of sort of going to pubs and listening to people talk and picking up useless snippets of information and you then i get asked it in a live stream years later and i go i know the answer to that i heard it in a pub in 1986 <laughs> no i've, right, I've really I'm really enjoyed it there yeah, no, I've really enjoyed tonight's show. Um, it's it's been good, Me and too. um, been like fun. I said, if anyone wants to come on, do a season, just drop us a DM next year, next week, we'll obviously yep. be two thousand, two thousand and one. So if anyone's interested, let us know. And may I draw your attention to something on the ticker below, Mister Miles? Have you noticed something that's slightly different? TikTok. Hmm. We have the TikTok. That was my daughter's idea. 
my daughter's idea. So there is a TikTok now, as well as Twitter, as well as for, um, Facebook, as well as Instagram. We are now on TikTok. God help us. Um, there's only a couple of videos on there, so but nothing special. But if any of you uh, into TikTok, my, my daughter badgered me and we've got it. So forged from iron underscore WHU. Mm. There it is. Um, Mr. Burford, um, are you going to have to download TikTok? Entirely up to you, my friend. Entirely up to you. And apparently they sponsor Wrexham. Hmm. They're nice. owned by Ryan Reynolds and someone else, aren't they? Can't remember who yeah. the other one is, but I know it's Ryan Reynolds. But right, we're rambling. We said 10 minutes ago we were going to bugger off and we're still here. So we're now going to hit, I'm now going to hit the end credits and then I'm going to hit end broadcast and then I'm going to go to bed because I've got work in the morning. But you've got a day off, haven't you, Milesy? No, last week I had it off. Oh, did you now? Yeah, I went. Yeah. I done a naughty, I done a naughty session in the pub, didn't I? Last week, I wankered. <laughs> oh dear! You never learn. Yeah. All right, then, guys. Thanks for joining us, Milesy. Thanks for your time. Uh, oh, hang on. Someone's just jumped in the live chat. There we go. Oh yeah, it's just uh, Tom saying thanks. Cheers, lads, and up the Amazon. Look after yourself, Tom. Thanks for coming along, yeah. mate. Um, mm. What do you want to say before we sign out, Milesy? Um, We are fucking massive, and it's coming home. We are. We are. It is coming home. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons. <laughs>